Welcome to DAX Machina. Join us as we explore the mysteries of this world. Cryptids, monsters, macabre tales, and horror stories abound. Could they be true? Are monsters real? Good evening, folks, and thank you for another uh, for joining us on another edition of DAX Machina. We uh, went back to restream since Melon was being such a pain in the butt, so we are we are back in business on one that actually functions. Uh, so so far so good. Knock on wood. Uh, knock on Anthony. You know. <laughs> so hopefully things will keep working. Um, it's it, it's not. The only thing, the only thing Mellon had over this was it was it was less expensive, <laughs> so we're, we're we're we've got one that works. This is probably what we're going to stick with unless something changes. Uh, so you know, thank you everybody for joining us. Joining me tonight is Anthony Pitbull Canatella, Robbie Rains, the crazy man from South Crackalacky, and <laughs> Robbie's daughter Taylor. Taylor, how are you doing tonight? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Robbie, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Doing real good. You guys ready to rock this thing? Yep, yeah, I am. Yep, yep. I'm excited about this show. This is this is gonna be a good one. It's gonna be how, fun. How, how you doing there, Pitbull? I'm good. Good. Good as could be. Yeah, I hear you. I know. I know the feeling. Yeah. Uh, know it looks like we're. Name. Hey, Norm's in the house. Um, where is he? Is he working? Northwood. North. Yeah, yeah he's, he's out tonight. working on the band aid bus today. Oh boy. Northwood Scripton says sometimes cheaper is not better way. Yeah, we learned that lesson with Melon. Yeah, we uh, did. And I even sent them a pretty lengthy feedback on why we were leaving. Yes. Yeah, hey, Mark Napier's in the house. John Doe's here. Cowboys five green, rings. Sugar Looks like we got a pretty full house. Sugar, Sugar Riches. Riches is there. Awesome. Lene. Hi, Miss Lene. How are you? Man, it Legs is filling up quickly. Yeah, me, me and Miss Linnea are friends on Facebook now. Awesome. Yeah. Well, as you can see behind... Well, we just lost Taylor. That happened. I don't know. Uh, as you can see behind Robbie and Anthony, they both have their uh, their wild hunt uh, things up. And um, I just got mine today, and I haven't opened it. I thought I would do... There she there is. She is. Come back in. Sorry. I, thought, I was wondering what happened to you. I got an ad, and it closed it. <laughs> Oh, uh oh, uh oh, we're not supposed to have ads. <laughs> uh, so, uh, you know, just in case with the with going back to restream, I'll make sure all the mods keep an eye on the uh, chat for that spam bot. Um, so it, it may actually show up, but I am going to actually unbox the box I got from Taylor and Robbie today. Oh, lift it up and show it. It's a big old cardboard box. I'm not going to hold it up and, and open it at the same time because it's going to be kind of problematic. Yeah, so I'll use my scallywag tactical. Don't show my my uh, glorious uh, wrapping. Well, it it, uh, it got a little crushed. You, you'll see. Be fine. You'll see what I'm saying when you open the box. <laughs> my packaging is beautiful. <laughs> He'll All right, well, let me shut this knife before I cut myself. He's going to laugh when he opens up and sees what, it, what the packing material is. <laughs> you packed it in paper <laughs> Is that where my paper towels went? No. Uh, yeah, I would say that's where the paper towels went. because no, no, I, I went and bought all new paper towels. Oh, so you that. bought a new roll of paper towels to stuff the box I bought with. like an eight pack to do all three of their... Bounty, the quicker wrapper upper. That's right. Why didn't you buy tissue paper? Because bubble wrap was a lot more expensive than. I said uh, tissue paper, but okay. Tissue paper was not protected. It. By the way, I got like a whole roll of uh, paper towels in mine. No, you got I'll two rolls. Run out. I'll that. never run out. You got two that rolls. Looks, Every one of you got looks, two rolls. That looks like wow. shit. It's the green screens locking it out. No, man. it does that. It looks great. I'm bug joking. Oh, that thing is cool. That looks awesome. You did that, have... Taylor? Yeah, that's the biggest vinyl I've ever done. Really? That yep. is freaking awesome. Very, very the... talented. I think I found it the was... envelope from Taylor. 
What's the name <laughs> of the company so people can know that you they can order stuff from you guys? Lone Wolf Customs. There you go. Or we're kind of big, uh, toss around going Lone Wolf, Wolf Customs and vinyl, or just leaving it how it is and throwing all that stuff in. But it, right now, it's Lone Wolf Customs. And give me just a second to get this box out here. Yeah, Miss, Mrs. Taylor did mine behind me. She did that. I painted it. Right. Well, I painted in the cut. Well, you both did it. Both of you yeah. guys did it. So, yeah, I got mine. Today. I did the machine cuts, and she did the. Did you find my pink and blue? I like how you put Robbie's daughter on it. <laughs> like, I well, know. when I labeled that, that was before I had gone on the show or met. Yeah, that's, also cool. that's like, before okay. y'all really matter. That's pretty cool that it's sealed I, with wax. I got the same yeah. thing. Yeah, I got the I wax to, seal. Yeah, I did that, and he was like, no, they're, <laughs> they're I, I feel all important and stuff. And stuff. No, I liked it. That was cool as hell. <laughs> I told you they'd like it. I don't break the wax seal, so I'm going to cut the top of the envelope. That's what I did. So I did this packaging for my uh, graduation invitations, and yeah. that's exactly what Dad did. He didn't want to mess up the wax seal, so he just cut over top of it. But listen, it, it looks really authentic. She did didn't. That she didn't want us to pay two hundred and fifty dollars for prom or for graduation invitations. So that child went and made her. That went and made her own graduation invitations, got her own envelopes, did the wax seal and everything. Nice. And they that were really ten cool. times nicer than anything Herf Jones had and cost probably a third of what everybody yeah, in the like, class paid. It cost like $40. Cost you, like, I was going to say 50 customs. bucks or everything. Yeah. And I don't know if this one will show up as well. Let me see. Yeah, well, I got that really one out too. There. I got that one too, man. I'm gonna put them on Those the truck awesome. when I get it. Those are really awesome. Those are gonna be nice. I gotta find a place to hang this. This is so freaking cool. I might even put LED lights in mine. The little strip that goes that you can buy. Mm -hmm. I'll make you some Nighthawk. <laughs> put them all around. Hey William, he's in. Hey William, what's up, William? How you feeling, man? <laughs> I just saw that. Where's my Taylor? <laughs> yeah, I'll make him one. Hey, hey William, if uh you get my email from DA, uh, we'll get you some in the mail. I made an extra invitation, so you can see what it looks like. So there's oh, the nice. front of it. That's very nice. nice. And there's the back. Nice. Yeah. Everybody who got one. Everybody who got one was just like, I'm trying to open it carefully so I don't mess it up. <laughs> My grandma spent like 10 minutes trying to open it without messing up the wax seal. It was great. <laughs> Those are really awesome. Thank you. I put it back on the wall. <laughs> yeah, it's good to have somebody with <laughs> a talent like that to do stuff. <laughs> Not Hawk says he's adopting you, Tyler. <laughs> Dad, are you okay with that? <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll share, William. I I can't I can't lose you <laughs> completely. Oh, well, that is really awesome. Thank you so much. I love that. Yeah, I, I yeah, you guys are, did a great job. I was I was like yeah, the kidney candy store. I was waiting for that UPS truck to pull up today. I was like, where is it? <laughs> I didn't even know they I, were arriving. I texted yeah. your dad. I'm like, where is it? And then he sends me DAs. And he goes, it arrived yesterday. I'm like, I'm looking at it. I'm like, where the hell is it? Oh, it says Springfield, well, Missouri. I said, no, that's DAs you sent me. Hey, look. I was looking at letters that small. I know, and my eyes you know. don't work that good, okay? I'm thinking somebody stole it off my off the uh, front stoop here. I'm like, oh, don't tell me that. Hey, don't feel bad. I did the same thing. I said, when I went to send Doc his, uh, telling him it was his, I sent DAs to him, too. He goes, DA's address, brother, and I'm like, ah, I did it again. <laughs> <laughs> well, Doc may or may not join us. Where is uh, he? Is he home? He was working late. Okay. He's home, There's... but he was working late at the shop. Yeah. I'm sure he's got uh, orders putting out, putting out orders hey, and stuff. You know, people showing Dark Angel Medical the love. And I'm yeah, happy that happy that they are. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yep. Well, anyway. Now that, uh, oh, now that the unboxing is done, and I've got you know a crap ton of paper towels to use for stuff. Me too. 
Hey, I just want to make sure y'all are taken care I of. Know, I know. That's it, man. I already used them for wiping off the oven tonight, so I don't feel bad. I put them in the I'm use. multitasking. I'm making sure you got paper towels, and I'm making sure you got your, your flags. So, yeah. I was going to... Sh- I was going to show you how the sticker went wrong, but it's a reference that isn't out yet. Yeah, don't do that yet. <laughs> I can't do that. You guys see my lights flicker? Did you see my lights flicker off and on again? You got a yeah. ghost, Robbie? I'm, no, I'm, 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 no, it's 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 been doing it all day, like the power, like little mini power surges. It's weird. Thank Who you, Miss Cam- or Thank you, C. Campbell. Thank you so much. Josh Dalton's in the house. Yeah. Uh, Well, the plan was to talk about Bigfoot versus Dogman. Now, I know uh, there's a a lot of speculation on that. And again, this is all going to be pure speculation. But apparently there is some historical precedence for this. Uh, The Choctaw have a legend of Bigfoot and Dogmen that fought a war over territory. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's probably not the only one out there. Uh, AJ Congdon says, DA, Lo, the new book is awesome. Hey, thanks, man. I really appreciate that. Yeah, if you guys, if you guys uh, haven't seen, I've got a brand new book out just released. Uh, it's not cryptid, but I think you'll like it anyway. Uh, it is called, let me post it up here. There's the new release. It's available now in Kindle and in print. Uh, the book's called Man's Marauders, A Planet Too Far. And hopefully it won't be too long before we'll have the uh, patch you see on the side of the tank there. Uh, we'll be having some of those made hopefully real soon. But I hope you guys will go over to Amazon and check that out. Again, you can get it in Kindle and in print. And I hope you guys will check that out. Appreciate it. Uh, so Bigfoot. Oh, Richie wants to know where you got that headset. Amazon. <laughs> Everything's on Amazon. Everything. They were only like $15. They're great. Miriam Nunn says, hey, D, I got all three of the Ape, all three Apex Predator books, but I'm not sure where to order to read them. There's actually five of the Apex Predators now. Uh, you want to go Wolf Moon, Blood Moon, then Hunter's Moon, Horned Moon, and Dark Moon. Uh, Kurt says, hello to everyone. Hope I didn't miss much. Just got the notification. Now I just did an unboxing, been a live unboxing, and uh, we're getting ready to jump in from there. Uh, Barry, uh, Barry 7676 has got my scallywag knife today. Thanks for the recommendations. Great knife. Yeah, I love those knives. Yep. Just absolutely high quality knives. Yep. Mine is. I still got an edge on it. Miriam Nunn says she's missing Blood Moon. That's the most recent, but it won't be the last. Uh, these are going to be ongoing series. So, you guys. Yes. <laughs> my talk, Hi Stranger says. He says, if Dogman and Bigfoot were wearing tutus, which would be just as scary and which would be a badass? Bigfoot yeah. would be the badass in, in, in a tutu. I think he would rock it. But I think Dogman would, would be still scary. I feel like I've seen art of Bigfoot in a tutu. That would be yes. uh, Sassy Squatch. That's the one on YouTube. They've been it's posting Sam that video. Yep. Sam the, Squatch the- or Sassy Squatch. Oh, oh Miss hey, Lenny, awesome. thank you. Thank you, Lenny. You are awesome. The uh, yeah, the the stream is working much better without Melon. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, I can see the chat. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. me too. It seems to be working better for all of us. Um, well, it had a little hiccup at the beginning, but it didn't want to let Robbie in. But once he figured out the right thing to click, he uh, he got right in. That's a nice way of saying it, right, Anthony? <laughs> yeah. Well, we Come sent on. the instructions to Anthony and Crayon, so he figured Here it out pretty fast. Here we go. Here <laughs> we go. Of course, I'm going to be the pun of it now. Here we go. I, I was telling Robbie if, if Anthony could figure it out. You're going, Come on, Robbie. I already had it saved because we used this, and I know the program. <laughs> yeah, you know the program. You not see anything on the right? 
No, I, said, I don't no, say anything. Dean left. told me. Oh, Dean I mean told left. me to say the right, and I said no, no, I mean left. Oh, the you're on the left. right. <laughs> when you look at the left side, it says events. But I'll take the kick. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I love you, Anthony. Yeah, I we love you, you brother. Love you. Blonde and booze are in the house. Awesome. I don't uh, see them. Somebody Chris had a question. Are. He said, as someone who just finished uh, binging your books, I've got one main issue. Need a chronological order for all the books since things are from different series carry over into other series and vice versa. If you go to my website, which is daroberts.net, uh, there'll be a list of tasks, uh, the, a task bar at the top. Look, uh, click on timeline and it'll show you the best order to read the books in. The timeline needs to be updated. It doesn't have the two newest books on it yet. Um, I had a, I, lo I lost my, I lost my uh, guy who was taking care of my website for me. So I'm going to have to figure out how to do it on my own. But if you go to daroberts.net and, and click on the tab that says timeline, it'll show you the, the, the best order to read them in. Wow, we've uh, already had 85 people. Yeah. This is awesome. Jumping up. Folks, make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe button. We can definitely use it. Um, so classic matchup. Let's just say the Patterson-Gimlin the Patterson Gimlin Bigfoot versus your standard dog man. Nothing, nothing special. No alphas. None of that. Just nope. straight no on. Way, no, nothing like that. Yeah, just, just straight up Bigfoot. basic. Patterson Gimlin Bigfoot versus dog man. See, like, I always had this. Is <laughs> that's funny because my uncle and I always used to have this discussion when we were kids at uh, my grandmother's house on Sunday afternoon of what would happen if a werewolf bit. Bigfoot, would he just turn into a real big hairball? Would he? <laughs> so this is this a is werewolf really Bigfoot. Thinking. Oh uh, my god, that's a terrifying thought. Yes, that's almost like a gugway. <clears throat> Darkwood says, "Dog man, my money's on Dog man." So here, here's my my take on this. Obviously, sheer brute strength goes mm -hmm. to Bigfoot. We know that. Mm -hmm. Agility goes to the dog man. Here's what it comes down to, in my opinion. And, you know, some, some people may have a different opinion, but it comes down to the intelligence factor. We know Bigfoot's intelligent, but mm -hmm. we've seen signs that dog men are intelligent too. So I think, you know, you got brute strength, speed and agility, and both have intelligence. It comes down to which creature has the most intelligence of that of whoever's fighting i mean because you could have this bigfoot may not be as smart as this dog man he's fighting and vice versa so i think who, it comes down to an intelligence quotient quotient who's, on the fight. who's flipping out in the background barking that's his his dog he didn't oh. take him out with him so now he's mad at me <laughs> oh this is not the worst um i have woken up at like 5 a.m after he's left for work to him I've never heard a dog cry and scream. Like, oh, yeah. don't, don't cry don't do and it. scream. You'll blow the microphones out. Don't do it. <laughs> Until, yeah. like, I'm not doing it. But, like, I have videos on Snapchat of him just like. Yeah. That's called separation anxiety. I was about to say, I know. a little bit of separation anxiety. I, oh, I got two of them that have it here. With my, my male will do the same thing. Will not leave me alone. He's laying right next to me on the floor. He will not leave me alone. I'm surprised you haven't heard of drinking a gallon of water. Yeah, well, it's like you did last time. Yeah, I didn't fill it up all the way again. I've That's got my why. good girl. So yeah, so, now, it's separation anxiety. A lot of dogs have it when they they, you know, they get so close to the owner. Especially pit bulls are the worst. They get it yeah. the worst. He's a boxer. When pit. Yeah, because when they are close to their owner, like he is with me and dad's your dad's dog. This dog will follow me anywhere I go without a, without a leash. And My on, command, does that. on command, he'll stop when I tell him to. He will not do anything, go after anything, nothing. I mean, that's she how won't do that. Yeah. We've got a lot of lot of speculation going on in the chat about Bigfoot versus Dogman. Yeah. So uh, let's, uh, yeah, let's get back over there. I could talk dogs all night. Um. A lot, of, a lot of people bringing up a lot of good points. You know, uh, Challen Balga said well, Bigfoot had prep time. We're talking no prep time. They're bipping through the woods, come around a corner, run nose to nose. Um, 
Bigfoot's got the, got the category of strength, but I think yeah. Dogman is just as smart and faster. I'd say yep. Dogman. Dogman has the claws and teeth to like tear in. Well, you know, look at this from an MMA standpoint, because I love MMA. So let's break this down from like a tail of the tape, like an MMA fight. <laughs> Bigger and stronger doesn't necessarily always translate into that person no. winning the fight. We know that. We've seen that know. happen, especially when, you know, if you go back to the very first fights of the UFC, that was the whole point of UFC when it was started by the Gracies, mm -hmm. was to show that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was, <clears throat> you know, a superior martial right. art, and it didn't matter what size the person was that was fighting him if you knew what you were doing. So, obviously, you know, Bigfoot's that's, bigger. That's stronger. true to a certain extent. I mean, no, no matter how good a fighter Conor McGregor is, you put him up against the mountain and he's going to get ripped in half. True. But that that's where I, that's where I was going. But it doesn't always translate to that unless you've got just such a such a drastic like Conor McGregor versus the mountain. Let's right. scale that up just a little bit and say Conor McGregor versus – or let's get some, somebody bigger than Conor McGregor so we don't have to try to find – somebody but keep the mountain in there and then put him up against somebody like um, andre the giant chuck no chuck liddell let's say and yeah you hit prime right. whole different story when you when you start talking about that because chuck's got the power to knock the mountain out yeah connor may not but chuck does that's more to me that is more <laughs> along the lines of what you'd be looking at as bigfoot versus dog man what the hell was that that was my ringtone hold on jeez that was john <laughs> Um, was I, that Leroy Jenkins? Your phones before the movie starts. Thank I, you. I was muting it and it went off. <laughs> I so like I look at it. I play out a lot of scenarios in my head when I think of things, and so like I look at it as Bigfoot has the strength, and from what we know, intelligence. Um, but from what we also know, Dogman is also a lot more aggressive. Yeah. So. And, and aggression takes Whereas, up a lot of space on so. the board. Yes. Whereas um, Bigfoot goes in more like self-defense, like a bear would almost. Mm -hmm. Like Dogman is just more aggressive. So it's, I feel like it's that definitely also more plays aggression. a big factor. But aggression can also <laughs> work get you in, you. In a, can get you in a bad situation if you're too aggressive too. Yeah. So uh, that's yeah. why I think it comes down to – you know, the smarter fighter in the situation. Because I think both of them are extremely intelligent. But, you know, being an intelligent fighter, you know, like, like Taylor just said, a Bigfoot's going to be fighting more from a defensive standpoint of self-defense, whereas the Dogman is, is going to be pushing towards that, you know, pushing the issue, pushing the fight and not backing down. So is that going to get him in too deep where he gets overextended? Or could. is it going to overwhelm the Bigfoot who is trying, you know, just trying to get away? <laughs> honestly, I, I see that if you do a thousand simulation fights, mm -hmm. I think honestly it would come down to a, a stalemate. It'd come down to a 500, 500 tie because depending on the cir circumstances and situation, either one of them could win the fight any number of times, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Well, they've they've done the the simulation yeah, where it they depends you know, on environment a gorilla versus a grizzly, which I think is. But just look how much stronger a gorilla would be than a grizzly. I think you know because uh, Bigfoot being a primate, I think it's definitely got the got the advantage in strength. Uh, if it got oh, its hands on the dog man, it's I think the fight's basically over. But if the dog man can stay one step ahead of it, I think it can do enough damage which that it, would eventually it, blood. I don't think it has any problem because you know the speed factor goes to the to the dog man. There's no way True. that a Bigfoot is going to be faster than a dog man. That's to, a, and agility is going to go to the dog man too. I just, but like you said, there again, if Bigfoot gets its hands on it, mm -hmm. William might have a good question, but uh, I think that one's a topic for another show. Okay. Um, without without having firsthand accounts. I think it's impossible to say, you know, it's kind of a he said, she said situation right now. But this is a, that's a good topic for another show. And I also want to say uh, say thank you to, to Kirst for a super chat. 
says, thanks. I wish that new prior LO, by the way, the Amazon did list Operation Lily as prior to the Wild Hunt series. Used Kindle, Kindle in any way. Always enjoyed the book. Well, thank you so much, and thank you for the super chat. I don't know why it didn't list Operation Lily as part of the series, because that's how I listed it. Um, right. Audible lists it as part of it. Or uh, not Audible, I'm sorry, Kindle does. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know why one would and the other doesn't. Yeah. But that's Amazon for you. Yeah. Um, I think pound for pound, if they were of similar size, let's say it's a you know, eight foot tall, 700 pound Bigfoot, and it's an eight foot tall, five to 700 pound dog man. Pound for pound, equal footing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the money on the dog man. But th that's when variances start coming in. You know, if it's an, a nine foot Sasquatch and a six foot dog man, you kind of get that Conor McGregor of the mountain scenario. Yeah. Well, look, look at all yeah. that. Look yeah. at all the accounts. Look at all the accounts of these guys saying these grizzlies and brown bears in Alaska haul ass when they spot one in a tree line. Mm -hmm. I well, mean, the, you got yeah, an 11, 1200 pound grizzly bear that's scared of this, uh, of a Bigfoot. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, well, then you've also got the fact that, that uh, the, the Bigfoot creatures, on average, the descriptions that people give of Bigfoot are much bigger than the average description of Dogman. And yeah. eight to nine foot Dogman's a rarity. And eight to nine foot Bigfoot is an average. Well, what's the yeah. average in Alaska, Fred was telling us? What's the size? This, 11, between 12 yeah. and 15 feet. Yeah, I mean that's a big that's a big boy, man. What you what you'd be looking at and even like you just said with an even more even matchup, what you'd be looking at is a juvenile Bigfoot versus an adult dog man. Yeah. Uh or an William, adolescent. Ryan William Roll says, uh, who, how did we know that, that Sasquatch Bigfoot is a primate? What if it's a hominid or something that's completely different? I, I just I, I called it a primate just because based on primate strength. But even if it is a hominid, humans are still technically primates, so it still falls into the primate right. category. I used a primate, a primate as an overall general description because, like I said, even humans are considered at higher primates. Right. So we don't, DNA, we don't know what Bigfoot is. But well, no, the DNA that they've tested so far, they, don't, they know it's not a primate. So far, they know it's not. So they know it's human. It's got human DNA. Um, that's the stuff I was talking to DA and about with uh what's her name um with her dna testing they actually no, found, well they found yeah because they found more they, they actually released a new finding um on the dna of bigfoot and they're trying to get it published out there mm -hmm. um, not the old stuff they found new stuff new 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 stuff in the dna that will explain everything um what they believe that the male DNA is because there's female DNA, but they don't know what the male female, they, they mm -hmm. don't know what the male DNA is. So, and she explains it in one of the podcasts. I think I sent you the podcast, DA, yeah, didn't I? Uh, yeah, I think you did. I have an uh, she to explains it, but she didn't go into detail because she was waiting for the, um, to be published out. And then she'll, yeah. she'll start talking about it and coming on the shows and stuff like that. She said, Nighthawk, Nighthawk points out, says, if you think that think that they would fight, Dogman always runs away, Bigfoot runs towards you. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I would say Dogman being being smart enough to realize it's outmatched. Um, but when you start throwing in weapons or, or even improvised weapons like boulders, that changes the, 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 the perspective of the fight. Uh, one thing to always bear in mind is Dogmen tend to move in packs. Uh, so one lone Bigfoot against a pack of Dogman is probably going to lose. Pack of Dogman versus a clan of Bigfoot, probably going to be a different matter. Uh, right. You guys remember in Avengers when, when Hulk played put out Loki? Yeah. I, I would think yeah. it would be something close to that if the Bigfoot got its hands on one and snap one backwards around a tree. Yeah, that was... But I mean, that's, even, even, if Bigfoot got its hands on it, it'd still have to do it quick because... I don't think a Bigfoot that's not like just really like Mountain versus Conor McGregor type situation mm -hmm. we were talking about. Even if it's an even match, I don't think a Bigfoot's going to want to hold on to a dog man too too long. Well, if, if, it it got a hold, if it got a hold of its shoulder or its or its head and just very quickly ripped an arm off, well, that's what I'm saying. It had to it have to be quick because yeah. if it just grabbed a hold of it and was kind of indecisive for a moment, you know. 
the claws and the teeth that Taylor pointed out earlier are gonna, you know, well, even North do some damage. Northwoods made a good comment too. The one I just put up there. How often will Bigfoot be alone? Not Thank often you. at all. Yeah, not often at all, unless it's a rogue, like one that right. one that got driven out of a clam for being really aggressive or something like that. We were just we were just speculating pound for pound, one Bigfoot, one dog man. Um, lots of factors come into play when you look at the the behaviors of these creatures. Like, you know, they're most generally are not alone. If you encounter one, there are others nearby. So I would uh I would say that you know it would quickly become a a nasty brawl. Um, Bigfoot being the brawler, Dogman being the more knife fighter style. Um, but, you know, uh, someone who even pointed out earlier that there's video out there of wolves taking down moose. Um, a wolf against a moose, can, it can still do a lot of damage. So don't discredit the claws and claws and teeth. Uh, oh, man, they got the, yeah. wolverines. Look at the wolverine. They're taking, wolverines are known to be taking down elk. And elk. I mean, they have accounts of wolverine, a small little wolverine taking down a full-grown elk. That's crazy. Yeah, uh, Darcy's like, Wiki says, why they're fighting is just as important as their size and skill. One protecting the young, the adrenaline course. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, what they're fighting. If they're fighting over a kill, it's one thing. But if it's one of them is protecting its young, yeah, it's going to fight much harder than it would. Yeah, I think if we're looking at even footing... Um, like you said, same, like height, weight. Um, I think it comes down to the terrain. Cause like we said at the beginning, a dog man is going to be more agile. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they've also got the claws and teeth. Cause if a dog man gets its hands on a bear, on a big foot, it can like rip its throat out, like clutch chest open whatever well, even if it spills but, its intestines uh, i mean yeah that's lethal but a yeah. bigfoot could also like probably grab a dog man's throat and break its neck well john doe pointed out that gorillas have like a 1300 pound bite pressure that's because that huge mandible well bigfoot are described as having very similar so i imagine the bite force on a bigfoot would be tremendous so if it got a hold of a dog man's arm and tight and took a hunk out of it it would probably bite through bone uh, yeah. So even if it doesn't have the teeth of a dog, man, I would I wouldn't I wouldn't discount its bite. Yeah, or even if it picked up a big rock and was able to get a good throw at it. Mm -hmm. oh, if it's, if it's chucking foot. boulders, it's a game changer. How about yeah. a big foot? That's why I how said terrain. Bigfoot, how about a big foot against a pissed off uh, divorced woman? That's a good <laughs> one. <laughs> Poor Bigfoot. Right. Well, Hillary, what is it? <laughs> Where's Northwoods? <laughs> Right. I had to get that in there before Northwood said it, but I got Curse, it in there. Curse said, would a dog man even need to fight Bigfoot straight up? Hit and run, slice and dice, then let the Bigfoot bleed out or spill its guts and then run off and wait. There's a lot to, a lot of factor. Very true. Um, that That's where I think that speed and agility comes in into play. If it's a hit and run type thing, stick and right. move, then I, I, it's going to be the dog man because I just – I don't see a Bigfoot being able to keep up and out quick a, a dog man. I think pound for pound, all things being equal, nobody using weapons other than what they naturally have. I, I think an individual against an individual, I I would give the edge to, to dog man. If you did that, ma the, 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 the computer matchup and put them together, you know, a thousand times, I'm going to bet dog man probably comes out on, comes out ahead between 60 and 70 percent but I, there's going to be chances when bigfoot gets in there and does the does the uh, human twist around and turns its head around backwards yeah um I, I think i think the edge would go to dog man if yeah. it's just a straight up no weapons involved fight you know yeah, they all, like, them being appropriate approximately similar size and that kind of thing yeah definitely i think that's definitely true and once again i definitely think it'll come like if they're evenly matched definitely terrain will play a big like they're on like solid flat ground mm -hmm. that's going to completely change it whether they're on, if they're on hills or with trees or whatever it's going to be a completely different thing pink dahlia says my my audio is a little scratchy you guys i sound okay to you guys no you sound yeah. fine Okay, uh -huh. maybe it might be on her end. I I, I was kind of leaning back away from the mic too, so that might have helped. Might have had a part of it. So, uh, 
let's see. Paul, dude, I can't say your last name. I am so sorry. Kokoratsis. I'm sorry, man. I am no one butchering it. it. says, if a tiger can take down a rhino, a dog man can take down a squatch. I, I, again, I think I think it's it, it would come down to you know, who got who first, who gets that first strike in. And I think because of speed and natural weapons, I think most most of the fights are going to go to a dog man. Now, there, here's where we start playing the variance game. With, you know, pound for pound, just all things being equal, dog man versus Bigfoot, I think the edge goes to dog man. I think, you know, in a good number of those fights, Bigfoot's still going to win, but I think more of the fights would go to dog man. What if we change out one thing? What if we change it from your average dog man versus your average gugway? Uh -huh. I think that flips it right there. The Gugway has has the natural weapons. The Gugway has the ferocity and the speed. And it's a lot faster than a normal Bigfoot. Um, so you got where, where the Dogman had the aggression in, or had the uh, upper hand in aggression and speed and things like that. I say a Gugway's got the, got the advantage on that and then probably still has the advantage on sheer strength too. Yeah, I think it's got all the advantages the Sasquatch has, plus the natural weapons of the Dogman. So yeah. I, I would say there would be opportunities when the Dogman would get in and get the first strike and do some nasty damage. But having watched that movie Primal Rage, oh yeah, uh, um, yes, I believe that was a good way in that movie. I think I think that's a very good representation of what a what a good way could do, not only on his intelligence level, but just sheer raw brutality. I think. 85 to 90 percent of the time the money's on the gugway well and that that's what's so scary about something like that is it's got all all the tools you know the, the aggression the hyper aggression the size the speed and all that stuff and it's got the intelligence too of an average bigfoot that's what makes those things so scary Stephen bishop's got a good one love the dog man but he better have his brown pants on if he sees a gugway uh-huh that's the brown pants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, did you say what I sent you earlier? Uh, I wasn't on the messenger, so let me get over there real quick. <laughs> Bigfoot in a tutu? Yeah. That's too funny. I told you, Eric, Dad says it's a sassy Sasquatch. We, uh, we had one uh, 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 Bigfoot in a tuxedo, but I don't know what I did with the image. Uh, World Bigfoot says radio. World Bigfoot radio says Gugway work in groups, which is because I'm, because they are no match for an adult male Sasquatch. Gugway don't get as bag, big as Sasquatch do. In some in some versions of the story, yeah, but there are some versions where the uh, version uh, accounts of Gugway getting massive. Uh, but I think Gugway versus Dogman. The mon my money's on Gugway. So a ba uh, Gugway is basically what we we're talking about earlier with a warefoot. Uh, Dogman, Bigfoot combination. It's a Bigfoot, but it's a lot we that we've talked about before. We think a lot of, it's a misidentified because sometimes it gets identified as a, a dogman. But right, it's got the snout and the look of it. Y'all have to it, forgive me. I'm still learning all this stuff. Think of Taylor. Think of a baboon or a mandrel. Those with the, with a kind of a rainbow painted noses mm -hmm. the multicolor stripes or nose mm -hmm. that would be that's what a uh how good ways are described they look more like the which you know baboons are really hyper aggressive right. too and so are mandrels mm -hmm. so that's that's where the or uh, more of the look of the cat. elongated snout the big long extended uh canines mm -hmm. okay. so just imagine a normal bigfoot but with that those, on crack. Creatures, those big big long canines and yeah that that works too i'm trying to copy the link of your the, for that show of your, your podcast over but every time i try to copy it it gives me this great big long url and when i try to put it in the uh in the uh thing it says it's too long so i've got to probably go yeah, to I'm, gonna, 
I'm going to put that the uh, variables up for Taylor to look at. So okay, go for it. it. All right. You see the type type three variable. Mm -hmm. That's what your dad. Well, kind of like that, but more like. That's what everybody is probably getting confused with the dog man and like Bigfoot. They think that's a, a dog man, but that looks more like a gugway right there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It's in the red. Type three yeah. variable three. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's what most like it looks like more like a baboon type of face, mm -hmm. you know, with the snout and everything. So and that's where he was trying to explain to you, you know, even um, the hybrids that they have. Oh, okay. There you go. I missed it. I was looking for the. Sorry. Animal. Um. Where is it? All right. Did you figure it out? Yeah, I've got I've got got that set up now. Um, Northwood says Anthony, that's the one that looks like my ex. If you put glasses on it. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. There he is. There he, he is. Time time, man. Yeah, I know he's getting there. George is going to bed. Good night, George. Good night, George. Good night. Good night, George. <laughs> I will name him George. I will name him George. That old, that old Bugs Bunny cartoon. That would be uh, um, that would be even hug him and squeeze him. I was just that, about to do that too. That would be some of the bigger Bigfoot if they got a hold of a dog man. <laughs> That's what yeah. we were calling or talking about with Anthony. <laughs> oh, he'd he'd would suddenly turn into and squeeze uh, him and pet him. <laughs> he'd turn into Lenny from the mice and men. Oh. Come with the rabbits, George. <laughs> yeah. Petting him with his finger on top of his head. Yeah. You have been a very bad boy, George. Yeah, William said it. Yeah. Okay, so uh, what would you guys think of, say, perhaps the, uh, the Swamp Ape? The skunk ape versus a dog man. Uh, dog man. Those okay. are generally reported as being smaller than normal big yeah, foot, they're right? Yeah, about, about the same size, eight foot, nine foot. They're not that big down here. I mean, they're big, you know. So, I mean, they're not, I mean, they are. I mean, well, they're the, 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 si the width size of them are. Pat Murphy asked what Gugway looked like. Well, let me see if I can pull up a picture for you. Um, I, uh, I believe I have one. Let me grab it. Give me just a second. Um, give me just a second to hunt, the, hunt this image up. So, if we're going to... So what about if we're changing to the swamp to the Rougarou? Because that would be more of a matchup that you would see if you're going with the, with the skunk ape or swamp ape or anything like that. Yeah, well, isn't the Rougarou yes, more of a werewolf? Yeah, yeah the, the Rougarou is a, is a um, voodoo it's werewolf. It's a natural type thing. Yeah. Okay, the, uh, it, who I mean, was it was asking about? What the gugway? I had that up there just a minute ago. That is about the closest I've ever seen to oh. Hollywood producing anything that looked like a gugway. Looks more like a mandrel in the face. Uh, they're massive. Yeah, uh, I've seen that out there, man. Forget it. Yeah. Deuces. They're, yeah. they're known to be extremely aggressive. Uh, yeah, in fact, I don't uh, think. 
I don't think I want to deal with that. <laughs> no. That's not something you want to run into, especially out in the woods. I'll just, like, lay down and accept my fate if I see one of those. Have you ever seen that movie, Taylor? No, I haven't. You need to watch it. Which one was that? It's yeah. called Primal Rage. That was the next Primal Rage. Yeah. We, yeah, I, you can... It came out in 2018. It came out in 2018. I still wasn't watching yeah. horror movies. <laughs> or any scary movie. That's that's the one where uh, prime, that is that the one with the t the couple and they're on yes. the road and they're yeah far, okay yeah man yeah. you gotta watch it. it's really good the it's name not sounds real, familiar yeah. it's a good movie we've got uh I think it's it's on Amazon or two B one we which we yeah got, I watched so it on Amazon it. I think yeah, I've probably seen it on Amazon the other day. It is a, it's a good yeah. one. It it's probably very, came up when I was looking yeah, at your books. That, that's it's, a, it, it's relentless and does not leave them alone no matter what they do. No, it's, it's very yeah. gory, too. So just yeah, look at it. Kirby says, gory. does the Dogmen look like the movie Dog Soldiers? That is one version of them. Uh, Dogmen have been described in multiple different ways. Uh, that's a good but, movie, too. Yeah, it is a good movie. But, but think you're... Your, your werewolf movies where they turn into the, not just the ones like the Lon Chaney werewolf where it's just like a human face that's been kind of wolfed out, but they got the full snout and they have the legs that are kind of like a dog leg with the, yeah. uh, what they call digitigrade feet as opposed to humans having plantigrade feet. Um, think of the, the werewolf from, uh, what was that movie? Van Helsing with, with uh, oh, um, yeah, yeah. Hugh, Hugh Jackman. Yeah, yeah. That's more of your classic dog man. Now that, if you, if because if I'm thinking correctly, that was probably about a nine to ten and a half foot version. Yeah. In, in the Van Helsing thing, because he he was pretty tall. Yeah, he was pretty big. That would be that would be a good matchup for just about any bigfoot, I would think. Now with this uh, with this chart here. I think the ones at the full, on the bottom are the only ones that are actually dogmen. Uh, there have been people described the hyena type. Right. Um, the most common seems to be the one that's the variant three, which looks a lot like the Van Helsing werewolf. Um, and there's quite a few that are seen that it'll basically just look like an upright German shepherd, that it's, its chest and arms are more, more slender. Uh, the ones at the top, I think, are either misidentified gugway or a type of bigfoot that we're not familiar with because they have snouts but they they're all described as being more primate like uh so i think that leads me to believe that that the ones at the top the variants up there are not actually dog men yeah. no, every time i opinion. try to think Every time I try to think like a movie werewolf or dog man, all i can think of is the goofy looking werewolf from monster squad <laughs> Yeah. That wasn't actually, I mean, other than the fact that he was a lot shorter than a normal werewolf, yeah. in the face, that actually was a pretty scary looking werewolf. Yeah, um, it's Patty, just, it was just the shorts he had on. It was like goofy. Lil Patty asked what year uh, Primal Rage came out. It came out in 2018. Oh, Nighthawk sent me some pictures. Let me see if he sent them to me on uh, Facebook. I'll have to check. Oh, sorry, everyone. I no problem. I don't know. I haven't, got, I haven't been sleeping good. Then again, I haven't seen Monster Squad in forever. Monster Squad was pretty funny. Yeah, yeah. no, he's goofy. He's goofy. That I'm is... a. I'm not always generally a, a fan of of uh, humor horror, uh, but, the, but I do enjoy it once in a while. But I, I generally like my horror pretty pretty much. Horror. Nighthawk sent me a couple of pictures of of uh, of, of some interest here. Uh, the first one, this is very very much your classic dog man. Well, this is a werewolf from a from a TV show. Mm. From the waist yeah, down, the legs, the thighs would look human, but the from the knees that's down, from a the, bad have moon. The, yeah, the knees would the knees down. They would have that hawk. Uh, what, you know, again, what they call digitigrade feet. Uh, this one, I think, is more of a wolf man. 
yep. uh, the classic werewolf. It's got a mostly human face with wolf elements and the normal looking. I don't know that might this might actually be digitigrade feet. It kind of fades out, but uh, I think that's more of a wolf man than a dog man. But uh, you know they and they are uh, are reported to get pretty big. Um. Um. Hold on, I gotta sneeze. I hate. When I, had, you I, I try to. I try to pinch that nerve on my nose because it stops it sometimes. I think I got <laughs> it that time. The um the TV show though Werewolf mm -hmm. back in the eighties back when me you and Anthony were kids. That, I've heard a lot of people describe that kind of dog man that. <clears throat> Excuse me. He did a lot of walking on four legs, but he could stand up and walk. But mm -hmm. if you think about it, he didn't do a whole lot of traveling on two legs. It was more like for short distances for fighting and things mm -hmm. like that. But it didn't, when it like really traveled, if you think back to the show, it did a lot on, on four legs. Mm -hmm. And I've heard a lot of. Well, a lot of a lot of accounts of dogmen they come they approach on two leg on four legs, and a lot of witnesses describe hearing a popping sound and then they stand up. I think yep. they can re remorph the, the the basic morphology of their of their hand to well, run you, on four legs. You think about that show being as old as it was, you know, so they things were not as advanced. So when it stood up, most of the time it's this is what you saw. It's hey, you know, it, he never like could manipulate his fingers and everything but it was just like this but so it's kind of mm -hmm. like what we were talking about with that is he was kind of like stuck between that wolf paw and human hands type thing yeah uh asks where do you think these beasts come from i i think they pre i think they've been here all along i think they predate our understanding of of creatures like this there's plenty of wilderness where they could exist without us ever knowing about them um the, the uh, accounts of dogman or, or cynocephali of creatures with do heads of dogs date back to the earliest days of recorded history. Both Marco Polo and, and Christopher Columbus reported seeing them on islands. Uh, Catholic iconography depicts uh, St. Christopher as being the dog-headed saint. He, he, and a lot, of their, a lot of their artwork shows him with the head of a dog. So I think they've been around for a very long time. We've just been comfortable not, not acknowledging creatures like this exist because the one the rare and two it would ca shatter our illusion of being the top of the food chain yeah, yeah. if you want to like look back at other like cultures too in different mythologies like in norse mythology we have the finner's wolf which is a giant giant wolf and right. then in egyptian mythology we have all the gods with the different animal heads mm -hmm. it's and then, like, even just looking back at stuff we know existed. Dinosaurs, like, if you saw them today, you it would be odd. Because mm -hmm. all of the creatures that we have now are somewhat, like, we're used to them. But a giant lizard would be a bit odd to see walking around right now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Anubis had a dog head from Egyptian. I'll put it like Sorry. this. I, I sent your dad and VA a video of a massive gator that they caught. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been gator hunting. Let me tell you, even nowadays when I see a, a 13, 14 foot gator, that still blows me away because that thing is so massive. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. a freaking living dinosaur. I mean, when I don't know if you've seen the video, guys, but that thing was massive when they took it out of the boat. And it had its own boat. They couldn't the put it in their boat. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'll send you the. I'll, I think I sent it to Dad. If not, I'll send it to you to Dad's phone later, and he can send it to you. John Doe says now for the real question: How many Bigfoot would it take? Would you need to kill a mountain giant? I'd say a lot. Yeah. That's the answer to that is a lot. Uh, Pat Murphy says: Are Gugway in all states? Uh, Gugway have have recently become more common sighted. Uh, normally, uh, I would say even as recent as 20 years ago, they were generally only seen in the northern colder states, uh, and they're because they're very big and they need a lot of room to, to hunt. Uh, but there have been gugway sightings in Arkansas now. Yeah, I think anywhere Bigfoot can go, they can go. 
Hey, no, 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 boss is on. What's Hello. up? Hey, man. How you doing? Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I haven't heard any accounts here in Florida that I know of. Of, uh, of, of no. Gugway? No, none. Uh, I yeah. haven't either, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not right. there. Right. I mean, I know that they started getting accounts of uh, dog men down here. I know that. Mm -hmm. So. My friend lives in Florida. Know. I'll have to ask her if she heard anything, too. Monster Radio says good evening to everybody. Evening, man. Evening, Monster Radio. Uh, trying to catch up with the, with the uh, comments. I'm, Sorry. Yeah, I'm looking at them right now. I got it on the big big screen thing on the side here. I'm watching them. Uh, John Doe says, DA, the first Westerners to step foot on the island of Komodo thought they were encountering dragons. Oh, thus yeah. the name Komodo Dragon. Yeah, um, but yeah, they those things were nasty. There was accounts from World War II of Japanese uh, soldiers when they first got to those islands. They were camping on the beach, and mm -hmm. during the night, those things ate, you know, dozens if not more of the soldiers. Those things yeah, were, they were dragging them. They were dragging yeah. them all. Yeah. Well, they show you in the documentary those things dragging off deer. I mean, yeah. Monster Radio says. Uh, DA, it's because people now know what to call the Gugway. Before, they were just known as Bigfoot. Or, in, as William said, his people used to refer to him as the Bear Man. Now, there have been Bear Man sightings in Appalachia. Uh, and those go back, you know, those go back centuries. So, I think, you know, I think yeah, he may be onto something there. World, I mean, sorry, Monster Radio is definitely onto something there. I think people now know that there are different types of Bigfoot. Uh, just seeing a big, hairy, ape-like creature, people probably just always thought it was Bigfoot. Uh, but when I read about the account down in Arkansas, uh, it was described as having a mandrel-like face. Um, and they just they, they reported it as a Bigfoot sighting, but the, the, how it stood out in my mind was they, they described it as having a more baboon-like or mandrel-like face. Uh, and that, to me, that's that's a good way. And that wasn't that far from here. No. It was an hour and a half or, or maybe two hours from where I'm at. Mm -hmm. uh, Kirby says, my buddy is a truck driver. He travels through Virginia to Maine. He would break down in the middle of nowhere, and he would tell, tell me he'd feel like something was watching him. I, we've heard that from a lot of truckers. Uh, of a dog man, uh, dog man approaching his truck from just at Taylor, Mississippi, said he looked out the passenger window and it was standing on it was standing on the ground looking in the truck right at him. Uh, so that thing had to have been eight and a half, nine feet, maybe even ten feet tall because those trucks aren't exactly close to the ground. I've had that eerie feeling before when driving. Like sometimes I'll text dad and I'll be like, "Hey, I." need you to come sit, stay on the porch while I come inside. I don't like the way I feel right now. And he will, because he trusts my intuition. Hey, if you, if you feel like something's watching you, odds are really good it is. Yep. Uh, Yoon, Yoon Hayek says, even back in the 70s, a former co-worker told me about how his grandmother in Mexico as a little girl encountered, according to her, described as a jet black giant dog. Uh, staring at her side of the road. And that was in the 70s. And that was back before people knew what to call. Um, back in the 70s, people just said it was a werewolf sighting or, you know, an upright do upright walking dog. Uh, this was before the phrase dog man really, really gained, uh, gained any traction. Uh, and those stories date back a long time. Yeah, because they're not as big now, but we forget a lot how big wolves actually are. Mm -hmm. And they, them being they're still massive now but being as they've gotten smaller back then it, they were probably a, a little a lot bigger mm -hmm. so like it would make sense for them to be like oh it's just a wolf but like yeah. especially like timber wolves like mm -hmm. they're massive like the ones we see around like on pictures and stuff that are domesticated they're smaller but if you find a wolf in the wild they are massive they're big uh, World Big Vic Radio says, unlike Dogman, Gugway don't live in areas Bigfoot have control over. They don't get along. 
Yeah, but we're hearing more stories of Bigfoots in er of, of Gugway in areas that were traditionally controlled by Bigfoot. There were Gugway sightings in the big thicket swamp of East Texas, which was traditionally a Bigfoot hot spot. Right. I think these things mm -hmm. are pushing into into more territory. Uh, and that's what we think what we talked about earlier. That may be why we're seeing a lot, having a lot more sightings because Gugway are pushing Bigfoot mm -hmm. into places mm -hmm. where they aren't, weren't normally. Yeah. Uh, Rethink Inc. says, is this an open discussion or accounts of Bigfoot and dog men from witnesses? It's kind of, it's really just an open discussion. And we really started out talking about who would win in a fight, Bigfoot versus dog men. But now it's just been, it kind of become an all, all, all around discussion of the, uh, these, these creatures behaviors, but we are still going to get back to the, uh, the, um, the, the versus story. Uh, James Latrell's got a good point. Ogres and trolls would be older names for Sasquatch creatures. Exactly. They in, in you in Europe they used to call them the wood woes. In fact, if you read the original epic poem Beowulf, the description that that they yes. talk, uh, yeah. I'm sorry, no, you're I'm waiting for it. I'm sorry. If you read the read the original epic poem Beowulf, the the description that they give for the for the Vendel yeah. are very large hairy creatures they're not yes. like the movie 13th warrior they're not just these guys these people that have gone feral and wear bear skulls they were legit like gigantic hairy monsters uh so can we think that beowulf may actually be one of the first recorded episodes of, of bigfoot predation on human yeah because grendel is a giant hairy beast walking on mm. land and then his mother, Gretel's mother, is a creature under the lake. Uh, Kurt says, if Gugway are coming that far down south, that's a disturbing question. Then there then is why. Heck, even for Dogman, why now? I grew up hearing about Big, uh, Bigfoot, but Dogman was just werewolves on TV. What's changed? I think what has changed is people are reporting them more. Uh, there's been such a stigma over the last... 60 years of people coming forward with Bigfoot stories, people just from all walks of life were made fun of. They're like, oh, well, they're just crazy. But when you look at the thousands upon thousands of recorded stories, you can't dismiss all of them as being some crazy guy. Like, like I'm, I'm prone to joking about it. It's not, you know, it's not, you know, two guys in bibbed overalls going, yeah, I saw the death watch. He came in and he stole my moonshine. It's not that kind of crap anymore. It, you know, those are the guys that re used to report, you know, you know, seeing the, the tornado in their trailer park and, and called the UFO hotline seven times a day. It's not like that. There are people that, you know, these are they're professionals who have come forward and want to remain anonymous because they have careers to think about. People that you would not think would admit to having a Bigfoot sighting are admitting to them now. And I think part of that is because of shows like Finding Bigfoot and all of the other shows on the expedition Bigfoot all of those ones out there that are bringing this subject more to focus. But at the same time, I think the creatures the, themselves are being seen more often than ever before. What do you guys think? We lost Robbie and Anthony. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Um, there is obviously a double-edged sword with the shows and stuff being popular. Like mm -hmm. um, that one show uh, where bunch of hillbillies in the woods oh yeah Mount, mountain mountain, mountain monsters. monsters yeah, yeah that, that is just, one is a, that one is like a sitcom type show. yeah take that with a grain of salt that i don't yeah, really count so, that as a legit show it's a yeah. comedy but that's what i'm saying there's like these shows that are the shows that are more popular tend to be seem to be like the at least the one they used to be more popular like a few years ago where the ones uh, that were making fun of it or Bigfoot Radio says Barilla in the Eastern Mountains. I think the Barilla, what they what they're talking about, is a Gugway. Um, someone's asked. Uh, oh, you Pat lose, said you guys might lose me here because it is thundering and lightning out like nuts. So well, hopefully well, we won't lose you, brother. Pat ADA, says, I got Pardon. I got to go. I've got to go transport somebody from here to Charleston. So oh, all right, oh, you're doing that now. I go, yeah, now I gotta, you're doing get, it. I got to yeah, I got to come get ready and leave now. So all I've right, got brother. eight hours ahead of me. You'll probably oh, see him pop up in just a second. Be safe. Yeah, uh, I'll see y'all. Later, see brother. You. Well, Taylor, oh. hey, Taylor, if I get knocked off here because of the power, you got to take over, honey. Okay, I got it. All right, all right. <laughs> Pat Murphy says, are Gugway in all states? I haven't read encounters of Gugway in all states. Um, 
and uh, World Bigfoot Radio can probably back me up on this. It seems to be the the, the states that we get the com uh, get the, the most Gugway sightings again are still the 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 mountainous and heavily wooded northern states. But we're starting to see them in other wooded states as well, like Arkansas. There's some sightings from here in Missouri. Um, you know, a lot the along the Lap, Appalachian Trail. Um, the only place I haven't heard of any, oh, we just lost Anthony, heard of any Bigfoot sighting, uh, Gugway sightings at all are the desert states. But that doesn't mean they're not there. Yeah. And I like the comments of um, ogres and trolls. Yeah, really I do too. Because like, I'm a strong believer of like, like with vampires and werewolves and everything, before I got into the whole cryptid thing, when I loved fantasy and everything. And I was always like, okay, but these stories came from somewhere. So right. even if they're not exactly what you think, say like werewolves are dogmen and ogres and trolls are Bigfoot, they had to come from somewhere. We can't, like, somebody could have came up with this, yes, but for them to be so popularized and like to still be a part of our modern day society and like be Absolutely. something that we talk about today, they've had to come from somewhere. Somebody mm -hmm. like, sure. Somebody could have misunderstood with a vampire, like a cannibal or somebody, then that's where vampires come from or whatever. And, it, I, and people with albinism, that wasn't always a known thing. Once right. again, another excuse for vampires, but with the, giant creatures that we're still seeing today such as bigfoot dogman gugway the stories that we hear as kids start to make sense i uh, yeah i would definitely agree um uh, barry 7676 said someone that they had a friend that had ran into town in southern in illinois that said they were chased by a gray baboon uh, that's definitely sounds like a, a more of a gugway than than an actual baboon because it was just not indigenous to this area uh, Nighthawk says a truck driver reported to me he saw a cat person, even had the long tail in Northern Virginia. Uh, there's a number of places where those those sightings are fairly common. Uh, I, I haven't actually interviewed somebody that had a sighting of one, but I have read quite a few. Um, <laughs> Rethink says you can get lost in DA's mind. Read his books. <laughs> I need to start reading them. I do. I forgot the uh, name of the YouTube channel that you told me to go to. For the for my books? Yeah. Oh, the the YouTube channel we, we talk about them on here, but you need to you know, if you want to check out my books, uh, you yeah. need to go over. To, uh, you can actually check out some of them for free over on uh, Cam uh, Cam Buckner's Dixie Cryptid podcast. Dixie Cryptid. That's he's got uh, he's got the entire first book of the uh, Cody Wild Hunt series up for free. Mm -hmm. uh, Monster Radio says, at cursed, interestingly enough, when it comes to the BFRO, they used to hate when someone mentioned Gugway. Any reports were dismissed. Uh, yeah, that's, unfortunately, that's, that's, you know, happens way too often. I think a lot of these have been dismissed because they didn't ma didn't match the accepted criteria of what a, what a Bigfoot, uh, Bigfoot sighting was supposed to be. Man, I am way behind on these comments. Yeah, they just keep going by, and I'm like, I'm just kind of like. Folks, I'm good. I'm, I apologize. I'm going to have to start at the very back, um, at the very bottom. Uh, let's see. Um, not sure if anyone is aware of a couple inner city limits encounters of Dogman you know, of, an all, uh, of all places in a posh, ritzy area, Laguna Beach in Southern California. Late night transit road repairmen were doing work off Laguna Canyon Drive. One worker saw. I can't, won't, won't ring all that up because it's too long. Um, yeah, they've actually seen Dogman in town in Los Angeles raiding trash cans. Um, there, have, there were Dogman sightings in St. Louis, inside the city limits of St. Louis here in Missouri. So they are not necessarily sticking to, you know, non-urban areas. Yeah, it's, they're definitely going to be more common in like our little small town areas just because not as many people, but. Yeah, William exactly. sent some more pictures. I don't know if I can get if I can get them since there's just the just the two of us now. They're, those are good pictures. Those are Bigfoot pictures, though. Well, one of them's a oh, that's a good one. I've got to share that one. That is a much better representation of the hyena one that that people have reported seeing. A hyena dog man sounds interesting. Yeah, the, they were they reported. Oh, well, let me put the the. You see the one. The K9 variant two, 
is reported to be very hyena like and that's yeah. a really good representation I yeah like i was looking at that when you had the variants up like really cool well, there's a good one too i need to put this one up this is a yeah. pretty good pretty good size perspective like the whole hyena thing makes you think oh boy makes you think like like we know with like the Gugway and Bigfoot, like they're like we would say those are like same kind of like subcategory of species, right? Yeah, definitely. Like it's thinking like, okay, if we have a hyena and a wolf, what other like dog creatures do we have that we just don't know of yet? Other I would canines. say pretty much any canine species mm -hmm. probably could be represented in dog man. Like, is there a kind pug of a man? Yeah, you little pug man. He's only, he's only about this tall and he's <laughs> constantly. <laughs> well, pugs do that because they can't breathe because they're not supposed to exist. I'd be terrified of a pug man. I, I don't know how terrified you'd be. I'd feel bad for it. <laughs> it's trying to chase you and it's like. <laughs> that's, the, that's them trying to breathe because they can't breathe. I had, a, I had a buddy that had a pug and I never knew if it was looking at me or at him. <laughs> it, I'd be looking at like I had that like one freaky eye. I'm like, is that dog looking at me or you? Is like I don't know. My uncle had a pug named Tug. A pug named Tug. Tug yeah. the pug. That's and I funny. have a pug plush named Mug. It's great. <laughs> His uh, other uh, pug's uh, name is Anna. I wouldn't say the the highly specified dog breeds would it would represent, but I would say yeah. any naturally existing dog breed or mm -hmm. canine breed would probably have a, a, yeah, a uh, dog man type variant, like like different types of wolves and stuff, probably because mm -hmm. yeah. those are different enough to where it's like like red yeah. wolf versus gray wolf or something like that. A timber wolf dog man would be it'd be a big one. Yeah, yeah. scary. Well, I I have a theory about about uh, the origin of Dogman, and I and, and it might be might be something that uh, that most people probably wouldn't agree with, but because so many people have reported Dogman approaching on all fours, and then they hear this popping sound as it stands up, I'm I'm wondering if Dogman might be an evolutionary offshoot of the dire wolf. Mm -hmm. That it basically just learned learned to adapt its 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 paws, for yeah. Well, you know, how we got domesticated dogs is we basically started feeding wolves, and they, you know, realized we had couches and came in and and, and became dogs. But but uh, you know, when, once once we domesticated the wolf, that's how we got all these different breeds of dog. Mm -hmm. But the the dire wolf was never domesticated. In fact, yeah. they believed it died out. Uh, what if it didn't? What if it just adapted? Yeah, you know, it, it was watching the wolves getting all the special treatment, and he goes, "Hey, you know, I don't want to do that, but you know, I see the, uh, the how they're gripping things, and there are dogs that can grip things with their paws." Mm -hmm. That would definitely be a good explanation of what happened with them, because they were known to be aggressive. If, like, correct me if I'm wrong, they were known to be more aggressive than other wolves, right? Yeah, and uh, they were. John Bell would say technically, if Dogman was a dire wolf derivative, it'd be a species of fox. Yeah, maybe dire wolf. If you see your pic, your reconstruction pictures, Fox they don't man. exactly look like most wolves. Um, but you know, if they if, as their numbers started dwindling, if they were able to able to crossbreed with other species of wolves, because fox is still a canine. I mean, yeah, you know, fox. Yeah, fox is a canine. That's what I was about to say. If we have a hyena and a supposed wolf, would say we don't just misinterpret it, and it actually is more fox-like, but we just see it as more wolf-like because the dire wolf, if it is if evolution of the dire wolf, the dire wolf mm -hmm. did look more like a wolf than a fox. Right. Uh, Appalachian, Trail Ta Appalachian Tales of Terror with host Jim Blanton. Hey, thanks for joining us. Appreciate you having me here tonight. Um, hang on. Lene says, Ryan wants to flip your, flip your wig with one of his investigation stories. Hey, I'd love to hear it. Ryan says dire wolves are five to seven feet tall. On their hind legs, they'd be massive. Uh. Nymeria says, unfortunately, fox are unable to crossbreed with any other type of dog. True, but that doesn't mean some point down the genetic pipeline it wasn't when the when the when those when those branches of the tree were much closer. Yeah, and like I was saying, 
a dire wolf is technically more closely related to fox, but it looks more like a wolf. So not saying it crossbreeded with a wolf, but it could be a misinterpretation because of how close a dire wolf looks to a fox, or it looks to a wolf. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I know that that genetically they were probably close. They're they're saying that they would, they were closer to foxes, uh, mm -hmm. but you know, at that point back in the, back in the genetic soup, before the species had drifted that far, they were probably still capable of cro of cross breeding. Let me yeah. see if I can find a, a, a good picture of a dire wolf. I know there are some out there. I'll grab one. Dire wolves existing to this to like today. Mm -hmm. It's a terrifying thought, but it's a very real possibility. Like, there's a lot of animals that were recently saved from extinction. Like, uh, pandas are recent are no longer endangered as of recently. Like, where there's a lot of like unknown things in the world to, like, not just saying just pandas, but like a lot of animals that were recently or were extinct are recently coming back. Yeah, there's a lot of unknown things in the world. Like the blue macaw was believed to be extinct but right they're now they're now just endangered i'm trying to find a, a an image that's in a in a format i can show unfortunately this one is not let me see if i can i can change that i might have to um uh, had a quick question from Mark Napier says, question is the red wolf of Argentina that looks like a giant long-legged fox. Uh, I don't know what subspecies that falls into, uh, but I know it's it's kind of a bizarre looking animal. Hey, it did it did let me upload it. Hot dog. Uh, this is a, a more recent representation of what they think dire wolf looked looked like versus what a gray wolf looked like. They are quite yeah. a bit bigger, but you know, back, you know, as far back as that goes. We don't know if they were actually able to crossbreed. Yeah. Uh, we don't know if they they were genetically compatible. We don't even know if that's what they actually look like. Yeah, that's best guess. Although they have found some yeah. pretty intact dire wolf skeletons in the Liberia tar pits recently. Yes, but that uh, that also begs the question: Is that just a certain type of dire wolf, or are there subcategories of dire wolf? Like, we don't know what all these people, what all them looked like. Uh, Sorry, Anthony I'm got caught in a, the, you're good. Caught in a Anthony, thunderstorm. Yeah, Anthony got caught in a thunderstorm, so he disconnected. Oh, these are good pictures that William sent. Let me uh, see if I can get those uploaded. You don't want to upload my picture? Which picture? <laughs> Bigfoot. <laughs> oh, the Bigfoot and the tutu. <laughs> Oh, this is today in creepy history. Well, of course, obviously, is, today's not March 18th. March 18th, 1913, 9 a.m. Railway engineer G.W. Hicks is traveling alone on a motor trolley along the newly installed tracks of the Magadi Railway in southern Kenya when he sparks a large animal. At first, he mistakes the creature for a hyena, but as the trolley approaches the, the beast, he realizes it's far too large as it's the size of a lion. It's covered in long, shaggy, tawny fur, has a thick set body, high withers, Wide rump, stumpy nose, small ears, large feet, no apparent tail. The animal lopes off before Hicks realizes that he's just seen the unknown bear that several others working on the railroad construction had reported seeing. Experts dismiss the sighting as misidentification since there are no longer any bear native to Africa. That, uh, that definitely looks hyena-like. And then there's the other one he sent. Oh, wow. That's a pretty cool picture. Yeah. Uh, there we go. Uh, Ryan the School says, I saw some stuff on Husky and a Gray Wolf. The Husky is a mini version. Only two videos. YouTube is a black bear-like wolf and then wolves. Uh, let's see. World Bigfoot Radio says, the Dar Wolves' untimely demise was overstated. Insider says, cave bears are also still in northern Canada. That would not surprise me. Robbie, you be safe, brother. He said be safe. He said will do.
uh, focus up figure says there's a video on YouTube of a dire wolf or dog man attacking a dog. Yeah, I've seen that. It's a good sized dog, like a full grown lab, I think it is. And as it gets close to this, what they just looks like at first is just a black wolf that's laying down. That thing gets up and it is four times the size of that lab. And labs aren't traditionally small dogs. Mondok says they're Shunk, uh, Shunkawarakin. Mark says just sent me an image. Uh, without everybody in here, I can't keep grabbing images. Um, <laughs> yeah, the main wolf. Yeah, I, 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 me and Taylor are struggling to keep up with the image, uh, the, the the conversation. I don't uh, know much about Bigfoot and Dogman, but I do know a bit about animals and mythology and stuff. So I'm trying. We're, 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 we're keeping up, but the, the comments are going by so fast. They're hard to keep up with. Um, uh, William, if you want to jump in, I'll send you a link, brother. You're more than welcome to jump in. Let me, uh, I'll shoot you the link. Hopefully, uh, Anthony will be able to get back. His power comes back. Um, uh, Kerway says, have you any encounters, DA? I, yeah, I had a dogman sighting in LBL. Uh, so with my own eyes, I, you know, I, at first, it wasn't even sure what I was looking at. As I panned my head, yeah, it was, it was basically a dark form among dark trees. It was under the tree canopy, but when it turned its head, well, it was following the vehicle we were in. That's when I saw it. I realized what I was looking at, and then I got Nick, Nick Valente's attention, and he turned and saw it too. I got a, between a 10 and 15 seconds. Hard to say exactly how long it was because time seems to go out the window right, right about that time, but it was probably between six and a half to seven feet tall. It wasn't huge, uh, and it looked like a human upper body with a with a head like a somewhere between a German Shepherd and a wolf, but the snout seemed to be a little blunter, a little wider, a little blunter. Uh, it had like hair coming off the tips of its ears. It was completely black. And at first I didn't recall the legs and body. I was I, I was so in shock, but then I, I started using um, mimetic tools, uh, like deep breathing exercises, trying to focus on the moment. And, I, I, and I, I'm, I'm confident in, my, in saying that it had definitely had the jittergrade feet and a tail. Uh, but it was completely black and it was very fast. So it was a dog man that you believe you saw? Oh, absolutely. There's nothing else it could have been. Unless yeah. there was a guy out in the middle of the of land between the lakes recreation and public recreation area in a werewolf suit that can run at blinding speeds. I mean, you, you don't know. Had to be Some of these crackheads are out, out of there. control. Ooh, it would have been fast. And the way, the way it ran wasn't normal. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't like, well, I've got a little dog man figure here. It wasn't like it just ran. It like did this weird like boom, 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 and then was down in this ravine. It was just kind of a yeah. bounding. It, it's hard and to describe it because it it doesn't didn't run really in a straight line. It kind of jump, 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 and on on the fourth the fourth little lope, it was boom, down in that ravine. There was no way we were catching it. That's kind of how wolves start running. They kind of bound and then they take off. It, it was like a. Uh, uh, Appalachian Tales of Terex is how tall was it? I would estimate between six and a half and seven feet tall. We went out to the tree where it was at, and uh, I, I was able to, to reach the spot where its head was. It, it wasn't like I was reaching way up on the tree. It was just like right close to my head level. Um, now, the one that we captured on video in Joe in the Joe Bald Recreation Area, I didn't see it at the time. We, kept, we found it, discovered it later on the video. That one had to be closer to nine feet tall. Hey, Dark Waters is in the house. Hey, Dark Waters. Hey, thanks for joining us. Hello. Uh, Kerway says her dogman does that zigzag motion. Yeah, it's, it was it was really bizarre the way it ran. Um, hang on, I hit the wrong one. Uh, Stephen Bishop says, "Da, I think out of all your books and Lakeview Man won the part in the beginning when Clark goes into the woods and the Gugway starts sprinting at him." Man, well, man, when I tell you that part. Spooks me every time. That that book kind of creeped me out at spots when I when I when I was writing it. Um, 
Appalachian Tales of Terror. So that's a cool sighting. Thank, thank you, man. I really appreciate that. Uh, they're flying by. So I click on one, and as I'm clicking on it, it jumps up two or three spaces. So I go to click on one, and I'm clicking on one two or three after. Yeah. Um, Mark Napier says he's got, got a good point. He said that, that's because they knew it was in Kentucky and a bullet might have been coming its way. Well, what you're not supposed to be armed in LBL. Um, supposed to be. So we'll just we'll just leave it at that. Um, Ryan at school says, send some videos to your messenger DA. I'll check those out after the show. Thank you for sending those. I can't really... Uh, I can't. I can't really take the time out to look at them now. Yeah, it's chat's going a little fast just for the yeah, two of us. Chat is flying. I uh, hope I sent the link to William. I hope he uh, he can jump in with us. Um, Lene's, Lenita's going to bed. Good night, Lenita. Thank you for being here. Good night, Lenita. Um. Trying to see if I missed any questions. Again, I'm sorry. I apologize, I'm folks. I'm going to cut out. I'm lagging quite a bit. Well, I may be on my own if I lose you. Uh, <laughs> Stephen Riva says, with my experience, they dogman move fast and use distractions very well. Uh, yeah, it, it was unbelievably fast. It covered an area that probably had to be 30 to 50 yards. Well, not maybe not that far. Probably thirty yards in just a few quick steps. By the fourth step, it was going down in a ravine. And when when Nick Valente and I got out there, there was no way we were going down that ravine after it, not without rope and ropes and rappelling gear, as it was steep. Yeah, but you're in their terrain. I, you, if oh, you're yeah. not expecting to go in, don't go in. You have to be prepared. I, like I think unless William's you came ready to, awesome. But like unless you came ready to go exploring something, don't go exploring it. Hey William. Hi, yeah, William. we we were not prepared to chase something out into the woods. Yeah. Uh. Jim Blanton from Appalachian Tales of Terror says, "I live in southeastern Kentucky on the Virginia border. I have taken sightings of Bigfoot and Dogman." One from the 80s of a dogman. It's a good sighting in the area we call Dogman Fields. I'd love to like to talk to you about that. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, Midi Aces, uh, DA, your encounter sounds like that one video from California by that hiker, dogman type creature uh, jump from side to side. I would like to, to uh, like to check that one out too. Uh, Tony Harris says he's having trouble buffering there. Um, Northwood says good night everybody. Good night, dude. Uh, Robert Sharp says DA knows you don't go into the LBL at night. Yeah, I know that now. Uh, but when I was in LBL last year, I did that. Uh, I, I even went out to some of the cemeteries at night. Um, won't do that again. Uh, let's just let's just leave it at that. It's not that I had anything really bad happen. I just had that oppressed feeling that I was not in a place where I felt safe. Uh, so next time I go back to LBL, it will be. If I go at night, it's not going to be alone, and it's not going to be unarmed. I don't feel safe. What should I do? Explore more. Yeah. I was like, hey, would you look at the time? <laughs> well, even in the daylight when I was there, uh, there's a video that's up on, on, up here on my channel. You can check it out. Some of my LBL videos. Uh, mm -hmm. I was filming in broad daylight. I had my camera on a tripod uh, and I was filming at the uh, Nickel Cemetery. And you can see me react a couple of times. And I think if you listen, you can even hear the, the, the leaves crackle. There was something moving in the woods behind me. I kept hearing it. And uh, I, I went into the woods kind of looking around and never did see anything. Uh, but when I got back to where my camera was at, I, I was like, you know what? I probably ought to get the hell out of here. Yeah. Steve Patton says, we'll go and rock some 458s. Yeah, you want something like that. William, how you doing, brother? I'm doing pretty good, DA. How are you doing? Uh, live and kicking so far, but it's early. Hi, William. Yeah, the camera won't work. I'm on my cell phone. How are you doing, Taylor? I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm good. Um, I wanted to uh, ask the... Uh, 
the whole uh, and being sighted jump, jumping out of portals with the tall blonde. And I, I, I've, I've heard a lot of stories. People talk about Dogman, especially like on Skinwalker Ranch uh, through portals. But I've really got no experience with portals personally. Uh, I've taken a few accounts where people have mentioned portals. Uh, but I, I, I still don't know what those are. I mean, yeah, obviously, you, you, know, you know, the name portal implies that they there you know, are a rift to somewhere. But uh, we don't we don't know what's causing it. We don't know where it's coming from, where it's going going to. It, it, it's just a very bizarre set of circumstances. Um, and I, I've, I've got my hands full just trying to explain a physical creature, let alone trying to explain the physics behind the portal. So I'm not saying they don't exist. I just don't really have a, a logical explanation. I don't know anything about portals. Yeah. yeah. Well, I just, you know, I've gotten a couple of reports where it's been, they've been spotted around. And, uh, actually they they basically disappear like basically like the glimmer man that's rec recorded mm -hmm. around portals so i'm trying to figure out some kind of a link between the two so figured out i'd ask you guys to see what you thought well, it's I, I don't deny the existence of portals i'm not going to ever be one of those guys that says oh all the stories with portals in them they're all baloney i i, I won't be that guy I just I don't have any personal experience with them, and the, the without without having some firsthand real knowledge, I, I can't even offer a, a good explanation for what they are. Um, I don't I don't understand the physics behind them. I mean, we start talking about I know CERN has has admitted they opened a portal. Uh, we don't know what the effects of that is. We don't know where it went. Where you know what happened when it did. Uh, could it be the, the the explanation of why we have so many Mandela effects? Uh, but we don't know what these these portals are, or where they're from, or what's producing them. Uh, so it's it, it, I'm I'm focusing on the mysteries that I, I can try to explain. I don't really get into the portals that much because I don't understand them. Yeah, I okay. Oh. I don't discredit anybody's thoughts because, like, I have a lot of thoughts that are seen as outlandish when it comes to like the ocean. I have thalassophobia. I'm terrified of deep ocean or deep waters. And I personally believe like if it's a rumor that it's an ocean like the Kraken, sirens, mermaids, megalodon, whatever have it. I if it's a possibility it's in there. I'm not I'm not going to discredit it. Like, if there's a rumor, it's an established fact. It's there. <laughs> no, if it's a rumor, it's a possibility. It's going to bite my leg off. <laughs> so I'm just not going to mess yeah. with it. Well, if it's Megalodon, it's going to take more than your leg. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm just, well, yeah. But I'm just going to, I just apply that knowledge or try to apply that knowledge into when I'm thinking about this is like everybody has their own experiences, their own encounters. I'm not going to discredit anybody. Unless I can tell they're being they're absolute BSing me, I'm not going to discredit anybody's encounters or anybody's perspective of what's happening, because we don't know what's really out there. So, why, Mark, yeah. why like that's, discredit anything? And yeah. good, that's that's really good. Ah. Well, a megalodon we, we the, could eat you without chewing. The whole portal in the dog man, so. I, I would be interested in learning more about them. I just, like I said, I don't, I don't understand them. Yeah. Lauren Booth says exactly no deep water, uh, clear and chlorine, chlorinated only. They, they've recently discovered a new shark in Japan. It is horrifyingly ugly. I, uh, <laughs> you just gotta look up the video. It's terrible. And I'm like, okay. We, we know nothing about what's in our backyard. <laughs> like, yeah. this is not fun. <laughs> John Doe has got a good point. He says, I say water and not ocean because bull sharks can survive in fresh water and go up rivers. Yeah, it wasn't just a couple of years ago. They caught a six-foot bull shark. A fisherman caught a six-foot bull shark uh, where the Missouri and the Mississippi rivers meet just uh, outside of St. Louis. Yeah, I think we had that conversation off camera before. 
because I was yeah. like, I'm fine with legs. And then you were, you and dad were like, no. <laughs> And the, the the possibility of the megalodon being out there is still I I I I say there's we don't know enough about the bottom of the ocean to say no. Mm -hmm. You can't categorically say no when we've only explored what ten percent of our oceans. Five percent and seventy percent of the world is ocean, and we've explored five percent, less than five percent. I think it's so like we, barely five percent. We know more about the surface of the moon than the bottom of the ocean. Yes, that's so we, actually we, what you can't say there's a there's a megalodon, not a yeah. not a megalodon out there. That's actually what my boyfriend just texted me. He said we've explored more of Mars than our own ocean. Yeah. And we don't know how deep the ocean is. We don't even know if it goes all the way through to the other end. We just we don't know. I've got a buddy who's a retired Navy SEAL. And I asked him what the weirdest thing was that happened to him while well, he was a, a SEAL. And I, was, and I was looking for something cryptidy, mm -hmm. and he said, "Well, I can't tell you where I was or what we were doing there, but I can tell you we were off the coast of an island, and I won't tell you what ocean." He said, "But we launched our my team launched from a submarine, and we were swimming across open ocean to get to this island." And he said, "At one point where we were free swimming, I looked down, and just at the edge of where the ocean gets too dark to see." He said something that had to be close to 70 feet long swam beneath him. And he said there was, it wasn't a whale because he said, because the fin went like this instead of like this. And I said, do you, was it, you think it was a megalodon? He goes, I don't know for sure what it was. He says, I just kept, uh, kept swimming and hoped it wasn't hungry. Nope. Yeah. And he saw, he said he saw that with his own eyes. He was swimming with his team and he looked down and he saw a, Saw the tail moving back and forth just at the edge of his vision. He said he didn't get a good look at it. He said just it was a dark form moving just at the edge of the light. And uh, if, I, you know, if I go to the beach, I'm swimming in the pool. Yeah, he was. Yeah, his, his opinion was I don't know what it was. I just hope it ain't hungry. And they kept swimming. Oh, I would cry. Oh, uh, I love how we've moved on to everything else other than yeah. talking to Bigfoot just to try to keep the fun. Just try to keep the episode going. Yeah, well, you know, we, we pretty much discussed, you know, what what Bigfoot versus Dogman, yeah. and there's a we know there's a lot of factors that would go in, into that. Mm -hmm. uh, we also know that uh, that you know it would also depend on who got the first shot in. Uh, yeah, and, and when you start throwing in were. factors like Gugway or Mountain Giant or or a Genosqua, um, I think it it, it goes. You know the the odds start shifting from the dog man pretty rapidly. Mm -hmm. William, yeah. what do you think? I think here in a little bit we might have to worry about whether they're going to start attacking us more instead of them. I I agree. I think they've become a lot more aggressive. You know, here, here I've said this before on other shows. Here in Springfield, we're the third largest city in Missouri. And if you count the little bedroom communities that kind of butt right up against the city limits of Springfield, counting like Nixa, Ozark, Willard, all the little bedroom communities like Stratford and all those, plus or minus we have roughly a quarter million people in the greater metropolitan area. Here in the city limits of Springfield, people have been getting both black bear and mountain lions on ring doorbell cameras. I think a lot of these big predators are starting to lose their fear of us. And that's a very, very dangerous place for us to be. Terrifying. Because we can so quickly go from the top of the food well, chain to the bottom. I don't think yeah, we've been at the top the of the food chain for a long time. Yeah, that's what, I, that's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Like we're, we're top of the food chain, but we're not really. Uh, Lorraine Booth says, DA, I need to send you email you my mountain lion encounter, but if you have any more cat cryptids or stories that would be a cool cool to hear about in the future. I, I, I think we're going to try to do a show on that. I, I like the cat cryptids one, cryptid stories, so I'm going to try to dig some of those stories up. Can I get some of the accounts that we can talk about on the air? Uh, but I think there's a show in the not-so-distant future on cat cryptids. I saw somebody ask if I've had a Bigfoot sighting. Um, I haven't, but I've definitely had a definitely had eerie feelings of something's watching me um on my drives home and when me and um when me and the other members of our little expedition team went out to look 
at the sighting we had, which we talked about a few episodes ago, I definitely had a feeling of something watching me and it definitely opened my eyes a lot more. So like I said, I am very new to this whole world, but the world of fantasy and is it fiction or fact, I am pretty aware, I'm pretty familiar with. It's just the cryptid side I'm pretty new to. But I've definitely had more eye-opening thoughts. Steve, Steve Padden, Padden, who's in the audience, he's a he's an officer I know. He says, I believe it's due to their food sources are moving into the city limits. I think I think you've got something something there. I know one night when I was a deputy, I was not in town, but it was not in the city limits, but they were still kind of town. Uh, I know I, I was I was uh, driving through an area and we were looking for somebody who had ran from the police earlier, and I was like shining the, my spotlight down into in, uh, into areas like around you know trash cans and stuff, and um, I saw something cross the road and I, I only saw it for a second. Can't say what down there it was gone. Uh, I don't think it was a per person, uh, but again I can't. I only saw it for a split second. So I can't say it was, a, I can't with any degree of certainty say it was a cryptid. And it, since it was off to my right when I had it in my spotlight, you know, there's no way my, 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 my dash cam picked anything up. Uh, saw it for a second, it moved on two legs. Um, so immediately thought but maybe it was a homeless person or something like that. But uh, it, uh, there, it was, there was no place it could have gone quickly and it, it, it was gone. It was absolutely gone. Oh, we lost William again. I was trying to get him back in. Uh, yeah. Little Patty says, oops, lights, lights, comma, people equal food. I think you're very much right. Um, uh, I think I think we they, they, there have been numerous accounts. There's a city in Oklahoma, well, not city, a small town in Oklahoma that were having a problem with Bigfoot coming in and raiding their trash cans in, inside the town. People were seeing them fairly commonly. So mm -hmm. I think I think not only are they coming closer, uh, I think we're seeing them in more numbers because it's it's one of those incidents where those instances where, like uh, like Steve pointed out, you know, the, you know, we've seen a lot more deer in town. I mean, here in Springfield, the deer population in town got so bad they were authorizing limited hunts if you only if you hunted with a bow. Uh, I'm, I haven't bow hunted in years, so I didn't try to get signed up for it. But I used to bow hunt. Um, I quit bow hunting because I, you know it was one of those. One of those times I was out in the woods and got a really, really creepy feeling and mm -hmm. realized I didn't want to try to take take on whatever it was. With a bow. With a bow. Yeah. So I stopped bow hunting. Yeah, understandable. Uh, uh, it's Mark kind Lincoln of... a good question. Go ahead, sorry. Uh, I was going to say, um, it's like when bears and foxes and whatever first are getting more comfortable with us and like start coming mm -hmm. up to our houses and going through our trash cans and stuff and now like you'll see bears go into people's houses they're so comfortable yeah. with humans like i dread i dread the day a bigfoot gets that comfortable uh mark napier says question could the migration toward towns be due to the wasting disease in deer maybe i don't know what 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 factor chronic wasting disease plays in that uh but I would think that a, that a large predator would be able to smell that the, there's something well, like, much like dogs can smell cancer in people. I would think that a cryptid that relies on on its its senses for hunting would know there was something wrong about that deer and not eat it. Um, Curse says, given all the 411 cases there are, I'd say we are the food for these things. I would agree. I think. It's not just being combined, uh, uh, being limited to the missing 411 cases, not just being limited to national parks anymore. It's starting to happen in urban areas as well. And I, and I you can't say that all of the missing 411 cases are, are cryptid, uh, but some of the really weird ones, there are hardly, hardly any other, any other explanation. Werewolf 5674 says gunpowder made us the apex predator. True, but it's, if you notice, uh, people hunting for their dinner is kind of a dying art. There's still a lot of people that do it. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying oh, there's not enough, not enough people to control the populations anymore. There's still a lot of hunters out there. But the thing is, is most people that you meet have never hunted in their life. You know, the, the, ease, the ease of being able to go to the grocery store and get all your needs has made a lot of people 
far more comfortable in not having that instinct. There's still plenty of people out there that are capable of it. I mean, I grew up hunting and fishing. I can still, I could still go back to doing that. But at the same time, we've got an entire generation that for the most part has no real knowledge of how that even works. Yeah, because like I'll watch social media and stuff and there'll be like people who have no idea about hunting or anything. And then it's so stark, like such a stark difference of my school being where it is and being the people that go there, a bunch of country folk just uh, come into school and they're camo and stuff. Even like with I one kid came in with with deer blood on him <laughs> from uh, skinning a deer before school. I've done it's, that myself. Yeah, it's such a stark difference between the world we see on social media and the world I have at my school. But it was definitely hunting is becoming less popular. When I when I was a kid, it was not uncommon to see every other vehicle in the in the parking lot was a pickup with a rifle in the gun rack. Yes. Uh, mine was. I had a pickup and I had a shotgun and a rifle in mine. Uh, Appalachian Tales of Terror, uh, Jim Blanton says, I have a sighting of a woman that saw a Bigfoot during a flood. Her family was out helping people recover belonging, belongings and she turned on her back porch light and it was going through her garbage. Yeah, I think they're very opportunistic. Uh, it is, it is, you know, any, any animal is going to be an opportunist. Uh, even animals that are, you know, we, we think of as the big predators like wolves. If they come across a kill of like a road kill or even a kill by something that they can take it from, like, a, like, like coyotes, they will, uh, you know, it's, it's eat or be eaten in the, in the animal kingdom. And it's they're hunter these creatures. scavengers. They're hunter yeah. scavengers. They're, they're going to take what they can get their hands on. That's how you survive. That's how humans used to survive. Um, Johnny Half says, many times up in north, up north in Canada, when we went guided fishing trips, the group to do the dishes or the bears were breaking the cabin. Um, yeah, you know, those wild bears smell food. They're going to come after it. There was a case here in Missouri. Uh, there was a lady who was feeding black bears off her back deck. And Missouri Conservation kept telling her, knock it off. They gave her multiple warnings. Well, one day she was gone and didn't put the food out. And they... You know, these two and two or three black bears basically ripped her back door off the hinges and destroyed the house getting food. Yeah. Like, um, I knew this, uh, I actually think it was my boyfriend's uncle said a mother bear got used to coming around his uncle's house. To the point where when the bear had cubs, or a cub, it dropped off its cub one day, and his uncle started just raising this bear. Or not, like, raising it, but, like, it would, like, live in his area. Mm -hmm. Like, he had a lot of land. Yeah, he would feed it, and it would give it company and stuff, and it, like, just raised this bear just because his mom trusted him. It's crazy. You know, the thing is, is you know, even black bears are predators. There are cases of black bears mauling and killing people for the most part. And I, I put that qualifier in there. For the most part, black bears will run if, if, you, if you confront one. You mm -hmm. make a loud noise and they're off like a shot. Yes. Uh, if you get between a mom and her cub, that's going to be a different, a different, a different encounter entirely. But 90 time, 90, 99 times out of 100, black bears will run. Yeah, the rule um, is with black bears, you make yourself big. With brown bears, you, or grizzly bears, you uh, play dead, right? You try to taste or bad. Or is it, yeah. They're saying now that playing dead doesn't necessarily work, since bears are opportunistic and will eat a dead animal. He said, my boyfriend said he semi-domesticated the mother bear, and she trusted his uncle when she had cubs. Hmm. Uh, Stephen Bishop says, Dogman versus, versus the Ozarks Howler. From what I've heard of the descriptions of the Ozarks Howler, I'm going to put my money on, on Ozarks Howler. Uh, it's just an absolute nasty animal. Um, and, you know, pound for pound, it's basically a hellhound. Uh, and they describe it as being the size of a, of a good-sized bear. 
So I, I would say Ozark Tower versus Dogman. I'm I'm gonna put my money on the on the Ozark Tower. John Doe says the, the rule is black bear fight back, brown bear get down, white bear say goodnight. Yeah, <laughs> polar bears polar bears don't mind you know just killing you. And with um, black bear fighting back, don't actually fist fight the bear. Just like yell and scream at it. <laughs> Just make yourself bigger, stand up tall, scream, like the whole hay bear thing. That's an actual thing. Make your presence known. Uh, Kerway says, can you explain how these beings, I, I'm not I'm not sure what what, it, what what do you mean by that? Like um, lure people in, I think. Is oh, I mean. lure people. Um, yeah, I think he just wrote lore instead of lore. Okay, I was, I was, I was trying to figure out what that, what that was mean. Um, there have been a lot of cases where people, and these would probably be closer to Wendigo, but they're, you know, Bigfoot have been known to mimic sounds as well. Uh, some people have been lured out into the woods because they said they heard the sound of a crying baby. Mm -hmm. uh, if William were in here, he'd tell you that if you hear your own name called from the woods, don't go. Nope. Um, but dogmen seem to be more directly aggressive. They don't try to lure you in they will try to back you into a place where it's more advantageous for them to kill you. Yeah. Uh, Wendigos are the ones that imitate sounds, right? Mm -hmm. Like they'll like imitate the voices of people you care about or whatever it is. I can't remember exactly. Again, I, I don't limited things. <laughs> well, there was one, one uh, Bigfoot story that I, that I remembered. And I want to say this was in Northern California. I can't remember. It's been a while since I read the actual account. But there was this guy that had, was routinely seeing these Bigfoot, you know, on his property. And it got to the point where they were, like, you know, getting very brave. Mm -hmm. uh, well, one night he went out to feed, feed the chickens. And as he was taking the food out, uh, he hears a, vo a gravelly voice from the woods go, here, chicky, 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 which is what he said every night to the chickens. Oh, no. And, and, and I think it was just mimicking the sound. But, you know, if it could mimic a voice, it could easily lure somebody out in the woods. Stephen Rivas says, I've heard a baby crying in the middle of nowhere at my last job. There's a lot of that. People re report hearing a baby crying. Yeah. Uh, I'll, and, uh, and then, also be careful with that because that could be human trafficking as well. Yeah. <laughs> Just that out there. Not often you hear a baby crying in the middle of the woods dead at, in the dead of night. Yes, but there are some crazy people now. So I'm just saying, if you're at a parking lot, you hear a baby crying, or you see a like abandoned car, see, it might be a real thing. It's not worth it to check. I'm just going to say, don't, don't, don't do it. Ryan William Roll says, little known fact in America, 6% and in Canada, 9% of people think they can do fist, fist to claw to bears, you know, fight, fight a bear with fists. Yeah, you're going to lose. That is not a, that is not a hopeful out outcome right there. Uh. Um John Doe says uh, mountain lions produce noises comparable to women screaming. Yeah. Um, and there have also been re accounts of people following these women screaming in the woods and they've not ever heard from them again. Um, yeah. Mountain lions will make um, almost human-like crying noises whenever they are either in heat or trying to get you to stay away from their cubs. So mm -hmm. if you hear that sound, you're either walking into a lot of two situations one of them's going to be better than the other one, but more than likely you want to stay away because you could be walking in on a mom protecting her cubs, which means you're going to die. Right. And it, the thing the thing is, is don't, don't ever let, and this is a problem. This is a growing problem. We should never have an opportunity for wild animals to associate humans with food. That's the same reason I tell people don't gift, don't feed, don't feed Sasquatch. Uh, you know, if you even if you're doing it, and I know I know Dave Scott over at over at uh, uh, radio, he's been gifting in a location out in the woods for years, and uh, he's have never had a problem with it. And a lot of people have you know gifted and never had an issue with it. But my, the, my thing is, is anytime you you get an animal that big to associate people with food. It's just a matter of time. Like even if you're gifting food way out in the middle of nowhere, you get some guy hiking that area that just doesn't know you put food on this particular stump at a certain time of day, and he's hiking past there, and 
doesn't doesn't know what he's getting himself into. And these creatures are like, hey, he didn't leave any food. Let's rip open that backpack and find it. And you know, next thing you know, this guy's a missing one one case. Anytime a big predator associates us with food, it's extremely dangerous. Yeah, like if anybody sits on that stump where you leave the food, their food. Oh, Ryan William Roll says, me and my best friend, we heard in the woods five weeks ago a growling and heavy breathing and then some whoops in my backyard. You, If you live up in Alaska like you know, like Fred, uh, you know, I would imagine anything in your backyard would be dangerous. But, yeah, if you're hearing whoops and, and, and growling, even if it's even if it's just a bear, there, you know, there's no sense of thinking you know, saying just a bear in, in places like Alaska because the, the coastal browns will eat you. And they they do occasionally take the, the you know the wayward hiker. Um, Kirsch says screeching cats are not screaming or not screaming only leads to bad things, either a predator or a human woman being slaughtered. Um, yeah, the yeah anytime you hear a scream in the woods, it's probably nothing good. Um, it could be a mountain lion. It could be a person getting murdered. Uh, unless you're prepared for what you're going to walk up on. I wouldn't try it. Uh, you could wind up getting yourself killed, you know, mauled, uh, mutilated, or, you know, you might just be, you know, a missing case. You know, no one ever knows what happened to you. John Doe says, I own an right. apex predator, a large monitor lizard. And while she is still very, very small now, something that is very important is to ensure that they do not associate you with food. Yeah, because as soon as they start associating you with food, then you can lose fingers. And monitor lizards can get pretty big. Yeah, it even happens with you know, dogs sometimes. Like, they, you mm -hmm. forget to feed them, and they, like, bite the hand that feed you. Like, food yeah, comes from that it's, hand. It's, it's more rare among dogs. I know from working crime yeah. scenes, uh, cats will, you know, you die in 24 hours, cats are eating you. Yeah, no, you, and they go for the, the soft bits first: fingers, the tip of your nose, the cheeks. Yeah, uh, they'll strip the, the flesh like, off your face. It's just the association of we don't know what they're thinking, we don't know what they believe. Like I know my dog loves me; she's never bit me. I don't think she ever will. But we don't know what animals think. Mm -hmm. uh, John, Do uh, no, it was Curry says I was working up in Bangor, Maine. People up there are scary. Uh, there's a lot of dogman sightings coming out of Maine, especially around Palmyra. That's uh, a heavy hotbed for dogman sightings. Um, you know, and I know this this entire conversation started out on the premise of Bigfoot versus dogman, and I think we kind of explored that. And I, and I don't necessarily want to jump back into that, but the the simple fact of the matter is, whatever it is, Bigfoot, dogman, Gugway, when you exchange any of those for human. Human's gonna lose. Even if you're well armed, you're probably still gonna gonna come up on the short end of the stick unless you're damn lucky. Uh, if you can keep them at range, you probably stand a chance. You might be able to might be able to put a few rounds into them, or at least put a few rounds in their area for you to get to a vehicle. But if they're close enough where they where they can get a hold of you or, or get claws on you, it's probably already too late for you. Uh, that's just a just a bad outcome. These cryptids are very dangerous. They are apex predators. They are at the top of the food chain. There's a reason why the uncanny valley theory exists. People all over the world were 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 tested by psychologists, and from it doesn't matter what walk of life, what what nationality, what what a uh, what genetic predisposition, what you know, what, what part of the world, what racial background profile, everybody, every human on earth has an innate fear of something that looks almost like us in the dark. You know, if you see something in, in the dark in your bedroom in the corner and, and you flip on the light and it's just a pile of clothes, but when the light was off, it looked like a human, there's a reason that we're programmed to fear that, to be to have that fear response. And I believe it is because at some point in our history, things that looked an awful lot like us hunted us in the dark. And that is a genetic memory that all of us possess. And in some parts of the world, even here in the United States, I think it's still happening. And I think it's going to continue to happen. Yeah. Like with the Wendigo that, mimicking sound, who mm -hmm. says they just, just mimic sound. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. They could mimic all sorts of things. Uh, Cowboys Five Ring says, have you done a show on the Nantanok yet? Uh, the Nantanok is uh, the Alaskan Alaskan name for Bigfoot. We had Larry Beans Baxter on the show. We talked about the Nantanok. Uh, he's actually been to Port Chatham. Uh, you, you can look him up. He's been on a lot a lot of these shows. He's a famous, you know, uh, cryptozoologist from Alaska. Um, we talked about the Nantanok quite a bit with him, but I would like to go back and do that again. I'd like to get Fred and maybe even Ryan William Roll on the show. And and talk and talk Nantanok and the Alaskan Bigfoot. I think that would be I think that would be a good one. Uh, Curry says, "How do you feel about doppel, doppelgangers?" Um, I think they're the, I think creatures like that exist. The myth of the of those creatures exists for a reason. Um, who knows what? You know, we'll look at look at uh, squids, squids and octopus, octopus. How they can you know mimic their surroundings? How do we know that's not just a genetic adaptation of a specific creature that it can mimic other creatures? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, David Thorne says, Doyle Thorne says, don't be afraid of the dark, be afraid of what hunts in the dark. Exactly. Uh, where our, our eyesight is not adapted well to seeing at night. Even when you've got your night vision, your night vision is still not as good as even a dog's. Um, and using night vision goggles only gives you a certain amount. Anybody that's used NVGs will tell you it's picking out gradients of the color green. Um, these creatures don't have that weakness. They are bred to this. Uh, I guess William Padden's going, uh, Steve Padden's going to bed. Good night, buddy. Uh, be safe. If you're on duty, be careful. No. Uh, yeah, someone mentioned the 21-foot 20, 20 rule. That's something we talked, yeah, there we go. Mondoc says, kind of like the 20 foot rule, 21 foot rule, bridge guards to knife versus a holstered gun. Yeah, we trained for that. In the academy and even in, in, in practical training as an officer, the 21 foot rule will get you killed. Uh, if you if you let somebody with a knife get within 21 feet of you, you're not going to clear leather before they stab you. Um, John Doe's got a very good point. 21 foot rule probably extends to something like 210 feet when talking about something as fast as a cryptid. Um, yeah, I don't know that I would try to outdraw one if it was any, any kind of distance close to you at all. Um, William, we, uh, well, Ryan William Roll says, Nantanak and Harry Man are the two names I know, the Sasquatch names in Alaska. Um, Cowboys Five Ring says, yeah, I have uh, Beans Baxter's book and watched the, the Port Chatham documentary. It was really good stuff. I Yeah, I liked having him on the show. I might have to reach out and get him back on at some point. Um yeah, I, think, I think the takeaway from this is, you know, you know, you all right? Everything all right, Taylor? Hmm? Can you hear me? Yeah, my back. Can is. you hear me? Everything, everything okay? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, World Fifty Six Seventy Four says gunfighting takes. Okay. Uh, World Fifty Six Seventy Four says gunfighting takes a lot of training, and a lot of a lot of rounds fired and killing something charging you is just from muscle reflex. Yeah, we we trained. Uh, what they called the zipper drill, which is a point blank range. You would slap the target, and it was literally slapped close. You would slap, and you'd engage the target at point blank range. We did that. We did another one called the combat tuck for engaging something that's literally in touch distance. And you, when they would give the command, you would you have start out with your hand up like you're trying to fend somebody off, and the target would be, you know, a foot from your chest. And they would give the give the command, and you would tuck your hand tied up against your chest and draw with your weapon firm up against your side and engage the target at less than a foot. Um, so, you know, we trained for that. Uh, we, we did train for good. We trained for, you know, a lot of different scenarios that I hope to God I never encountered as a cop. Uh, but even, even trained shooters, and this is something that they've backed up by field research all over the world, even trained marksmen, cops who are trained to exchange fire under fire, um, when, it, when critical incidents happen, your accuracy drops to less than 10%. And I, I don't know that I want to bet my life on 10% odds when it comes to, not 10%, 10 accuracy when it comes to a cryptid charging me. Um, that adrenaline starts dumping, and if it's at any distance at all, this this much wiggle room can mean the diff, all the difference in the world between a miss and a hit at you know 25 yards or even even longer ranges. 
you know, it does not take much movement of the barrel of that pistol to turn what should have been a center mass shot into a clean miss. Um, werewolf 5674 says, my German shepherd's a freaking werewolf. Um, yeah, you know, we uh, we used to recall the uh, the department's uh, Belgian Malinois. We used to call them Maligators. Um, <laughs> William, William, Brian William Roll says, are there any other names D.A. Roberts know? Other names for the Sasquatch Bigfoot, not to knock an Aryan Other names for them? Oh, there's a bunch, dude. Uh, I've got a list somewhere. Uh, there, every tribe has got at least one name for these creatures. Uh, and then you start throwing in like the ones that are seen in other places of the world. The list is extensively long. I could probably, you know, post a, an article with probably in the ballpark of 60 to 70 different names for these creatures. Um, I've got a bunch of them compiled. I had to do that as a blog entry. Blog entry. Uh, West Coast Dogman Shane says the Shietanka and the Genosqua. Uh, the Shietanka is the uh, is the Lakota word for Bigfoot. Uh, but yeah, again, every tribe's got different names. Um, the Genosqua is a different type of Bigfoot entirely. They that is a that is a uh, a very aggressive type, very big, uh, that were known for using the sap off of trees to have rocks stuck to them to stop arrows. I don't know if they do that so much anymore because bullets have a lot more penetration than a stone-tipped arrow. But they were they were allegedly would coat themselves in sap and then roll in river rocks to have these this rock armor that would stop arrows. Uh, Curse says, "Da, I loved your books, but you just reminded me of one thing. I kept thinking throughout them, not enough casualties. Yeah, they're all spec ops troops, but they're still humans versus cryptids. Yeah, but they go in at pretty much overwhelming odds. Um, like in 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 Curse of the Wendigo, they you know they turned out to be multiple creatures, but there were a couple hundred of them there." So yeah, I, 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 and besides that, if I keep killing off too many characters, then I, uh, I, I lose a lot of a lot of main characters. I'm not ready to lose yet. Um, get a lot of people mad at you too. <laughs> yeah, I do get a lot of hate mail when I kill off popular characters. Um, William uh, Ryan William Roll says, "Text them to me. I'll send you the text document I've got." Um, oh, you know, shoot me a message on Facebook to remind me so I don't forget. Um, but again, the takeaway from this is these creatures, you know, we, there's, a, there's a lot of speculation. We could go one way or the other on which would win, but I can guarantee you which one's going to win if you go up against it and, and it's 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 in range where it can grab you. It doesn't matter what you've got. It could be a samurai sword. It could be, you know, a large caliber handgun. If it is, if it is in close enough range to get you, yeah, I'd say the odds of it killing you are extremely high. Um, <laughs> West Coast Dogman Shane says, "Just don't kill, just kill, just don't kill Will Will Gray Eagle." Um, I like Will Gray Eagle. I don't have any plans on killing him off any anytime soon, but things happen in the books, so we'll, I can't promise a hundred percent. Yeah, Big K shows just say characters that get killed can always come back as zombies. Yeah, but that's not quite the same. Um, Little Patty says, "Just don't kill off Steve Lilly." Well, that's that's Cam Buckner's character, so. I think he would scout me if I tried to kill off Steve Lilly. Um, yeah, folks, just remember these things are these these things are extremely dangerous. If you're if you're going to be out in the woods, just remember we are not at the top of the food chain once we're outside our comfort zone. There are things out there that can and will kill you. You know, bears, mountain lions, snakes. There are creatures in the in, in the woods of North America that can and will kill you. Moose kill people all the time. Uh, coyotes, if you have a bad enough injury and you can't get out of the woods on your own, if there's nobody to help you, coyotes will kill you. They will come in and tear you apart. It has happened. Uh, minor injuries when you're ba way back in the woods can be, be become life-threatening. Some, something as much as a rolled ankle where you can't put weight on your foot could mean the difference with life and death of you getting out of the woods alive. Taylor's getting sleepy. We'll start wrapping things uh, tiny up, straight. <laughs> Tiny <laughs> A tiny scrape can turn into a lethal infection if you are out. Yes, in the yes, it could. <laughs> My old lieutenant's in the in the in the house, James Jenkins. He says you can't kill off Will. Who would take care of the charger? Exactly. Um. Oh yeah, uh, David Lester says another great movie with troops going up against an unknown as spectral. Uh, yeah, I've watched it. That's a good movie. Uh, that is really cool. 
Um, if you're going out in the woods, it doesn't matter if you're camping, fishing, hunting, backpacking, Bigfoot hunting, take a med kit. And I, I, and again, I'm not just saying this because Doc's a friend of mine. I trusted my life to Dark Angel Medical. Those are the best kits in the business. They, they, you know, they're some of those kits, especially if you're getting a trauma kit, you're going to, you're going to pay a little bit for them, but they are worth it. You cannot undervalue your own life. Uh, the, those 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 kits are the best in the business and if you use it to save your life or anyone else's they'll replace that kit for free uh so you know head over to dark angel medical check out their kits and if you do purchase a kit use the code cryptid 25 for 25 percent off that's off your entire order um doc's a great guy he did that did that uh, discount code just for us over here at the ax machina Th that's the best the best discount they offer uh, even their Labor Day sale right now is only 20% off. So, you know, if you if you want to get a Dark Angel kit, 25% off if you use Cryptid 25. And let, let Carrie know that we sent you because he loves to hear that. Um, if you're going to go out in the woods, have a plan. Make sure someone that's not going with you knows when you're going and when you're supposed to be back. That way, if you don't come back, somebody knows to go looking for you and knows where. Tell them exactly where you're going to be. Take something like a compass and know how to use it. Uh, I carry a lensatic compass anytime I'm, I'm away from anywhere. You know, I've got one attached to my pack. You, you definitely want to carry basic survival gear. Life straw. Again, I'm not getting paid by any of these people. Life straw makes a makes a makes a kit you can buy. It's about 20, 25 bucks. It weighs next to nothing. You can throw it in a backpack and you can drink straight out of a mud puddle if you need to. Uh, that water will filter out par particulates uh, up to and including some radiation. Uh, you will be able to drink if you go to a, a body of water like a pond. You can put the end of that life straw in it and drink straight out of the straw and have filtered good water. And I've used the old iodine tabs and the old uh, the old uh, old boil it before you drink it. it. It still never tastes worth a crap. Uh, the life straw, while it may not taste like the may taste like a bottle of Aquafina, it doesn't taste like pond water either. Uh, and it could definitely save your life. life. Rule of three. Good. Life straws are fantastic. The rule of three, three minutes without air, three, uh, three, three, uh, three minutes without air, three hours without shelter and extreme wa weather, uh, three, three days without water, three weeks without food. The rule of three will save your butt. Yeah. Like David Lester says, have a GPS. If you don't have a, if you don't have a GPS, uh, they're, they're definitely a good one to have. Don't count on your phone because once you lose cell signal, it's, Basically, a recording device. Uh, you can send a goodbye message to whoever finds your body. Um, and you know, once you're away from the, the, once you're in the woods, nine times out of ten, you are not going to get a cell a cell signal. Um, take something that, that a food that'll, that'll that can that can stand up to the test of time. You know, something that'll last. Uh, I used to, I used to just throw three or four power bars in my pack if I knew I was going to be away from away from a trail. If when my go bag, like if we had to go, you know, go after to track a fugitive or something, somebody that ran from the police, my go bag had had a bladder of water and, and about half a dozen power bars in it. Hey, you know, they're not great to live on, but it, if you're starving, you know, they they sure beat a sharp stick in the eye. Um, William Roll, William uh, Ryan William Roll says I made a great thing Nutella fudge. Nutella and water, mix and wait for two to four days, then eat it. Uh, to me, it tastes amazing. And then if you want want it like put pudding, then add whipped cream. Huh. Um, <laughs> Werewolf 5674 says, the EA doesn't need to kill off any more characters. Uh, just, folks, if you're going to go out anywhere in the woods or away from basic services, just be prepared. Take something to defend yourself. Even if you don't believe in carrying a firearm, Take a good knife. The, the, the knife is one of man's, mankind's greatest inventions. We can use it for so much. Uh, get one of those uh, flint flint start, uh, fire starter. They don't weigh anything, and you can keep those in your bag. Uh, I think I've got two or three of them. Yeah, Meg says uh, D.A. Taylor looks sleepy. Yeah, I'm trying to wrap it up, but I'm, I'm a little long-winded. Um, again, folks, just be safe out there. <laughs> If wherever you're going, you deserve to come home safe. Um, 
I know Robbie's out there on the road right now doing a transport. So, my, you know, keep your, keep Robbie in your prayers that he gets home safe. I know every time I put on my uniform, my family was worried to death until I came back through the door. And it, it's a dangerous job, and it's it's greatly underappreciated these days. Um, so you know, keep, him, keep him in your thoughts and prayers that he gets home safe because that's a long drive. Um, hopefully uh, Anthony's okay. I'll text him after the show to make sure he's, you know, still doing okay without power. Um, David Lester says, for those of you that do not know what inReach is, it's a GPS device that, that can call for help and send messages by satellite. That would be a great one to have. I don't have one of those, but I, I may have to look into getting one. Um, folks, thank you guys for joining us tonight. We had a great time tonight. Uh, even though it was just me and Taylor for a big chunk of it. Um, appreciate each and every one of you guys. We have had a wonderful time. Uh, really enjoyed this topic and what we stayed on it. Um, and thank you guys, each and every one of you guys, for, for spending your evening with us. Uh, I, there will not be a show this Saturday. I will be in Lexington, Missouri for the Fall into the Supernatural. Uh, if you have not purchased your tickets, there is still time. Uh, that, that is this event right here. I will be hosting the Bigfoot, the Bigfoot Bonfire uh, on Friday night. That is this Friday night. If you want to get tickets, go to eventbrite.com and search Fall into the Supernatural. Uh, there are tickets still available. So you know, hopefully we'll see uh, see you all there. It's going to be a, be a good, uh, good time. Guys, be safe wherever you're going. Be careful. Come home safe to your family because those are the ones that, that matter the most. Get a med kit because the life you save very well could be theirs or your own. Just again, be careful. And I, you know, I, I've said it before. Say it again. I will always say it. We don't have fans. We have friends. And I appreciate each and every one of you guys for spending time with us. Um, stories are journeys that we take together. And I want to thank each and every one of you for taking this journey with us. Taylor, thank you so much for hanging out with me. I know this is uh, not not your usual forte, but. I appreciate your input because you do bring <laughs> valuable insight. Yeah, I like I like having your I, your perspective okay. on this. I, I enjoy having your perspective on this because you're not looking at it like you know somebody that's got years of digging into this and may have their 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 brain wired one way. You've you've got fresh perspective on a lot of the cryptid things, and I really appreciate it. So I appreciate what you bring to the show. Thank you very much. Um, hope you <laughs> hope uh, hope your dad gets home safe. I'll be worried about him until he does. Um, yeah. And, and, oh, let's so show this off one more time. I, this is so cool. I can't wait to hang this. It's going to be freaking awesome. Um, i got to find a good spot for it. Um, <laughs> but again, fall into the supernatural this weekend. I uh, hope to see you guys there. It's going to be going to be a good event. Taylor, thank you again. I hope you, I hope you have an awesome night. You be, you be safe. Being there by yourself, so you, you be careful. And uh, again, thank you guys for spending this Wednesday evening with us. We had a really good time. Join us this uh, following Wednesday, as there won't be a show since I'll be in Fall into Supernatural. But uh, look for that to be posted in the next few days. And uh, appreciate you guys joining us, and and hope you guys have a wonderful evening. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for spending your evening with us. Hope you guys have an amazing night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you for joining us. Catch us again Wednesdays and Saturdays on DAX Machina. A special thanks to all our channel members and Patreon supporters. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe.